Troops, Riley's gaff is brought to you by G4 Claims. If you're involved in an accident and it was not your fault, and don't, if it was your fault, don't even bother phoning, right? If it wasn't your fault, get in touch with them, not at faultclaim.com, and the number is 01698 767 172. So get in touch with them. It's a free process. They're going to take care of all your stresses and sort everything out for you. Also, if you want to receive every episode ad free, what else, Jamie? Uh, extra bonus content, extra deep fried every single month. If you're Aye. a fan of deep fried, you need to get over to the Patreon. So you can subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Riley's Gaff. There's so many perks. As we said, ad, every episode ad free, bonus episodes, bonus deep frieds, behind the scenes stuff. And we'll deliver a Bucks bar to your house every Aye. month. Aye. And you get to ask guest questions as well, which you don't get today normally. So, aye. If you want to support us, patreon.com forward slash Riley's Gaff. Enjoy the podcast. But you know, for the most part, nothing ain't different. Sometimes be stuck in my ways, we can fit up in somebody's kitchen. Stick in my hand, I'm chilling with the troops in my few cans, doing so I walk like Winston. Trust me, I wake up hanging, you hang that I'm leaving this bed, you're kidding. I'm sitting on back in the pad, get deep fried, and I smoke some plaques of the grass. Put the feet up, kick back, and relaxing your best. No, I'm sticking on Riley's gown. Hey, Trips, what's happening? We're back in. What I guess we've got today. Highly requested, mate. Aye. Oh, really? Aye. Since, we, since we started this, mate. Really? Aye. And a lot of people giving us your uh, your Sunday name, mate. What? Grass and Bastards. Was the name. I was going to say Grass and Bastards, and I was like, ah, fuck, I want them to talk about me. <laughs> no, <laughs> <myself> no. <laughs> no, but mate, I, I was wondering, like, where did, obviously, 5 on the podcast, everybody? <laughs> Well, come on, brother. Even the producers clap, man. I know. Camera. That's, how, that's how you know it's going to be a good uh, one, bro. Uh, so, mate, where did that name come from? Well, basically, mate, mate, mate I've been getting shit nicknames all my life, right? I come from like, a long line of shit nicknames, right? <laughs> oh, I've got bad, mate. I've got my dad's got like seven brothers and one sister. Pure typical govern family, know what I mean? Fucking incestuous as fuck. <laughs> but fucking, like, my dad's nickname was like Roby. I was like a plain one. I had an uncle called Toast because his face was burnt. A fucking uncle called Hogan. Ah, I was sick, mate. So, eh. Uh, I used to get caught brains when I started secondary school. Primary school was dynamite, man. I, I played Yu Gi Oh cards. I was a pure wee geek. I get away with it. Secondary school, it was just game over with that shit. I, I used to look chalk white and see my face look quite skinny. Cunts used to call me brains as if I'm a fucking zombie. Go brains. <laughs> and that stuck and I fucking hated it, man. But it was one of the ones when you hate a nickname, and their cunts call you. Ah, yeah. Then I was getting into second year. That's how fucking long that shit went on for. Went into second year and the. I started getting my kind of bamming cunts up face so I was obviously bamming thought I was bamming up this mad lassie and uh, I was telling her fucking me and my pa was laughing about fucking every scheme in Glasgow and that man fucking I fought every cunt <laughs> <laughs> like pure mean it elaborate as fuck you know what I mean and she believed us and the next time I was like in the science corridor and she was walking by us and she was like alright 50 schemes who are you fighting for the night <laughs> <laughs> stuck stuck 50 like, schemes then it was 50 schemes mate then 50 schemes but then, mate, 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 do, you, do you mind like scheme hopper was a mad uh, slag that's what I said I'll get caught <laughs> cause don't get me wrong see when I started kind of hanging about like gangs and shit right so I have a bit of scheme called Hilton for a while and then like, kinda, I kind of I was piling with this boy and uh, he for whatever reason he scheme hopped to like penalty as the scheme they used to fight with and I was quite pal with him so I just I thought nothing ate so I scheme hopped and on went about with him Mate, you actually never done that you better not have done that <laughs> yeah I did there I'm a pure rat I know why I done it I done it when the disses were about I was like I'm not getting a diss you know the disses were about man but fucking Aye, man, it fucking... The name pure stuck with us, and then I get my report cared back for, like, second year, and I'd been late 50 times. But I stayed across the road for the school, you know what I mean? I was, like, I was terrible for being late. Then uh, a, a story resurfaced, even I was in, like, primary seven. I was in, uh, like, the cafeteria queue, obviously queuing up to get my fucking dinner and whatnot, and uh, it was a bird, right? I was talking to you, it's always with birds. I know, I'm getting this This is team. a common theme in my life, you know what I mean? So I had a 50 pence piece, and I was like, ah, I can make this disappear. So I flung it in my mouth, meaning to fly it under my tongue and go, ah, thinking it was brilliant. I flung it and tapped my tongue, but my brain was all in the motion I moved my tongue. So I flung it and tapped my tongue and lifted my tongue up and fucking choked in it. And I was like, ah, 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 like that, man. And the head teachers ran here and started glaring, fucking my back. And then well, I've ended up spewing all her shoes and that, man. 
I forgot about it and get reminded about it. It was even this, this fifth thing, so it was like the report came and that it was like solidified. Then it took me a good few years to start answering kids. See, because you go at fifteen, I would ignore them until oh, they say something, and but then I mean, just went. What you meant today? You just get into it, didn't you? I had to just mm-hmm. went. I was like, fuck it, I called me. That's it. My nicknames like. You don't get to pick them most of the time, you know what I mean? The worst thing is try to give yourself a nickname. Oh, see, so kids are like, ah, oh, yeah. Call me this now, mate. Aye, You're like, that. nah, mate. A, bit, a boy I know done that, he said, uh, do you hear that? They're, they're calling me the dragon. <laughs> And then so he was just caught the Did dragon, you bro. He got a tattoo. He got a tattoo. Well, a tattoo? Say that, so <laughs> <laughs> he got a tattoo on holiday the, uh, with a, a, with a wee dragon. That nah, just to call himself a bacon. I got away with it because he was a mad funny cunt. Know what I, mean? uh, <laughs> but, like I also knew a boy in my school, bro, that was called 50 Pence because he heavy wanted to be a mad rapper on that. Oh, oh really? Oh, so he just loved 50 Pence. Bro, that's the thing, mate. See, every time, because... Very, no, very often. See, whenever I introduce myself, it see when I say my name's Jordan, I feel like I'm hiding something. I feel like I'm an undercover agent or something. Like but see, when I say my name's that, 50. Yeah, that does sound like a lie, by the way. Aye, like, it sounds like oh, my name's Jordan. Like, the way you, even you, you didn't even believe that when you said it. Mate, sometimes I need to think twice, like, this man. Because the only kids that call me Jordan is my fucking man of pose. <laughs> know what I mean? For a lawyer. But fucking, see, when I say it, it cuts 50, it's like. I think it, look, because I can understand if somebody says, Matt, to me, their name was a number, I'd, I'd make a shite joke and all. <laughs> See them at a country go, what, 50 pence? <laughs> well, I think that's the first, you're the first cut to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I've heard a few belters. Uh, look, my, name always, my, my name always went with my weight. So when my weight fluctuated, so one point, right, I fucking, I was solid, right, I was hitting the gym and that, and fucking, I was in the jail and kind of started calling me 50% water, because I was like, that first solid juice? But then I end up, when I get out, I end up going to my Denders and that, and patched the gym and put on a big belly, and kind of started calling me 50 stone. And oh, it was, just, it was so one of so... Five O, I feel it's neutral ground. I can say five O and cuts. Saying that when I tell cuts, oh my name's five O, thinking I'm being smart, and they get para because then, uh, well, as if I, if I was the police, I would tell you, mate. Uh, uh, aye, five O, aye, it does sound like uh, that. Aye, especially when you talk to cuts that are obviously up to no good, man, because they genuinely get para. Mate, like, what is it we? People for mate, I find like people for Govan are just crazy characters. Obviously, your pals were raving David, uh-huh. um, and he was on here. Now, how did you end up meeting him? Did you go to school with him? So he was in the year below me at school, but I don't remember him probably because he was skinny. You know what I mean? He's, he's the only better to remember him when he loses his weight. I can't know what I mean. But no, all jokes aside, so I ended up piling that boy in the jail, and when I got out, he was like, "Moan down to govern, moan down, just do the jail, moan down to govern." That's, that's a fucking great idea. That's like, going to so, so I ended up going to this pub called the Gazelle, and I remember stepping into it. And it you ever watch Shameless? Aye. Mm-hmm. So see that the is it the jockey or something? They go to that mad pub. It's just pure aye, mental. Aye. It pure remind me of that. I was last place in dynamite, and uh, that's when I first kind of. I'd say I first became more acquainted with him, know what I mean? Because we'd obviously met each other in the past. And I met her half, man, and just uh, been pals ever since, man. Aye. Fucking mad bastards. So, got me in some sticky situations. So you knew, so, see, so going back to like when you were younger and that, and you were saying like you were getting involved with gangs and that, so was he no. He was an awe because he was on here talking about that. So we used, used any cross paths at the times, really? Well, so. See, I hung about Hilton and Hilton and Penel. used to fight. That was just like they two used to fight Aye. each other. But he was feeling like Lunthus uh, kind of way, and they used to fight with like the Moss Heights or fight with the Whiny or the Ibrook. So kind of he was fighting in the other direction. I stayed in the Moss Heights. That's in Cardonald. So he fought the scheme that I hung. I stayed in, but. I never hung about with the scheme I stayed in. Mm-hmm. I hung about with the scheme they all hated, aye. which was, you can see, my decision making wasn't really a good it's not, it's not even good to this day, but I so we never really crossed paths in that access. Uh, there, that, that, that fucking but instance. That instance, instance. <laughs> How the fuck did I fuck that? I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I didn't even know if that was the right word, mate. Just fell right when I said that. Aye, so obviously. You've got your podcast, Premeditated Part. Before we go into that, though, you're just off your first headline show. How was that, mate? Mate, Dynamite Man went so well. Seen the run up to it, I was kind of like that. Off. I was going through every emotion possible, man, because at one point, as you've seen, I'd done a documentary. Uh, what uh, and I released that for Christmas but I remember at one point fucking I just I had this documentary come up obviously you know yourself try to release a podcast every week then I had this show I felt like my head was going to explode Aye. and that's when I kind of had to learn to kind of deal with like multiple things at once so uh, and then up to the show and that man uh, I was quite lucky in a lot of respects like I ended up uh, I ended up supporting Jordan McCann mm-hmm. opened the show for him like, a week before my show and uh, I think that helped Today helped push a lot of ticket sales, but I also ended up in some kind of mad beef with two rappers. Aye. But a few weeks before that, but see, look, basically, I'll take you back because it adds into how I sold tickets for this show. So basically, a mad guy dissed me, right? 
and, uh, and this just guy, unprovoked just like aye so basically I went on a TikTok live a while ago right just me on TikTok live and this guy's popped up and just started mouthing off I'd never heard of the cunt in my life talking to some lot of shite so I've ended up slaughtering him on that and then I thought he's been a, like a Scottish rapper right and, and the Scottish rap community he's fucking hated every cunt hates him and uh, so people were coming on my podcast and like, his name might come up and I black he's a walloper about him and I was just because, after this first instance so I think it's obviously been I've maybe slaughtered him one too many times and he's made a diss about me he was threatening to do a diss about me and I was like right did you kind of want on me were you kind of pushing for a while well mate you've always been choking to be in a diss I've been pure manifesting it right but then it got to a point I was like you know what I'm not even going to apply to this cunt because cunts were like listen if you day mate you'll be doing him a favour but the day I I funny he dissed me right this day and like 20 minutes later funny my granny died so I was kind of like ah fuck and then I was like this prick's getting it (laughs) know what I mean so it happened it was just a timing thing so like that day I get pure I get heavy fucking autistic about it Fired man up. oh mate I was I would hate man I was in work but I was weird because I worked night shift but I just so happened to be working like a 9 to 2 that day so I had a full day ahead of me so I literally went home, I got a beat and I wrote it, and then I, I went to my wee studio, I got a studio in my spare room, and I sat in there for like six hours, recorded it, produced it, and all that, I like pure, wouldn't, they, wouldn't even look at my phone, I'm a pure phone addict, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, wasn't he trying to bathroom into birds or that, was day to day basis, nothing man, distractions, bro. nothing mate, I literally locked myself in this room man, I was like Harry Potter or something, <laughs> so I was just, I done that, and the next day I went out my camera, because I recently got a camera and I went out and I was just kicking about the town filming shit, I like, the first place I filmed was see that bridge that takes you I don't know if you know Glasgow City Centre well so see where the Sheriff Court is it's ah, on one yeah, side yeah. of the Clyde and you can walk across a bridge to take you into the town ah, right. like so where the squinty bridge is but like the other one ah, yeah, and like, like the one that's like it's, it's a bit further than ah, the Clyde ah, than that ah, so, so it's, it's, like, like, it's like a big red bridge ah, so it's, yeah, a walk, exactly. it's a walk bridge and, uh, but it's just for walking there's name, you can't get motors on that no, right? so that was the first place I planted my camera but it was like 10 in the morning so the bridge was obviously hoaxing with lawyers cunts got a court and that man and I'm doing this mad district that's the fucking looks I was getting man pure animated man because I was because I I only wrote the thing last night, so I didn't even know half the words, so I had to keep doing it and then got to remember the words. And I'm shitting shit about shagging cunts' arses and all that. <laughs> speaker was heavy blasting, you know what I mean? And uh, so I went and done that, released that, and that was partly the reason why I was doing it. I was like, ah, right, there's something in this because that I can try and sell tickets for this show after the back of this beef. So that was a big reason why I done it. Then somebody else done a diss about me after that. And I was like, I was just seizing opportunity. Aye. I was just seizing opportunity Mate, at that see, point. See that first diss you done? Aye. I shared it to my story, right? And my fucking, my grand fought me and she done, what's that wee man so angry about on your Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's worse. The fact she thinks I'm a wee man or the fact she thinks I'm angry. But the thing is, I didn't know which part I shared and it was pure like, you know, fucking... That's funny, like an afro. <laughs> oh mate, it was it was a buzz at the time. See, doing that and putting it out, and all that. Then I was getting the back and forth, and somebody else made a diss about us, and I was kind of like, ah, right. You opened yourself up to it, then, didn't you? Aye, ah, well, that's right. the thing, but because uh, this guy, I, 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 I kind of know so much as I run in, basically, they couldn't fucking try to chin us a while ago. Because I go to somebody in my podcast, and the boys for Dundee, and I wrote, Becoming Dundee's Finest Rapper. You know what it's like ah, being a podcast? Yeah, you you know, know, yeah. I, I ah, yeah. No saying the boys no capable of that, but that's my thing at the time. The guy got a bean a bonnet about it. A guy got a bean his bonnet about it. Fucking messages and all that, man. I was like, what the fuck? It was kind of getting a bit. a Dundee rapper that was ah, saying he's but imagine, the best ima- <laughs> But imagine being like, at, like, it's, that's like, it's, that's like you getting. That's like you getting um, somebody else that does a podcast in Glasgow, right? And writing Glasgow's best podcasters and us being like, here we go, but you're fucking bamboo. 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 you I was a bit like, what the Because f- I just woke up after a night shift and this cunt messaged me and I was like, what the fuck is, is this happening? And then I, I thought out the guy was actually messaging people for Dundee that was sharing it, pulling them up. And I was kind of like, ah, what the fuck? And I get a bit annoyed and I was like, who the fuck do you think he is? I know. So I ended up sh- like, re-sharing the podcast the next day my story going, make sure you don't miss my podcast with Dundee's top rappers. <laughs> Capital letters. So the cunts end up unfollowing me, right? So for that, I was the last I'd kind of heard of that cunt. So he's popped back up after this diss and basically done like a kind of let's fucking slide this about me. He hadn't named this, but it was clearly about mm-hmm. me. Somebody sent me. I was like, oh, right, I've just slaughtered this cunt. I'm not going to let him away, mate. <laughs> and plus as well, I had that in my head. I was like, ah, well, I felt as if I'd let him off. Are these two thing. pals each other? Apparently so, aye. Because so they're both for Dundee, aren't they? No, man, it's uh, fucking Ayrshire. Oh, man, oh man, they, they, they are, right, right, right. So, pure opposite end of the oh. spectrum, man. They're probably fucking uncle cousins or some shit like that. Places of life. Dundee and Ayrshire. I'll get done, fuck your face, you're right. Sorry, mate. Oh, I'm going to 
that's it. No, I'm sure you'll feel good about it. No, but he's fit as was Arsenal. I'll tell you, I think this guy's with Kamalo, so I don't know if that's actually true. I think, fuck, I say myself. No, but so, apparently they were pals, right? It was Stoughton meets Stoughton, one of them, man. So, I've ended up doing that, and then see since then, fucking hell, the cunts are meshing me, the cunts were voiced on me. I was slagging them at first, and then it got to a point I was getting nothing else done. It was pure enveloping my creativity, mm. see. Because that's all I was thinking about, was that prick saying, or what I can say is slaughter them back. I was getting nothing done. I was, all my focus was getting taken up by that, and I'm realising these cunts have too much time in their horns. And I realised that one of the boys, like, he would have like 50 of his own YouTube accounts and make up with different names to comment in his own videos. Oh. But that kind of Bro, shit. I'm like, thought some cunts go I know. Mad, but see, when I'm looking at it and I'm like, I'm literally arguing this cunt, giving this cunt my energy. I'm like, ah, that's fucking. I, was, I actually felt embarrassed. <laughs> so I ended up like, the cunt, one of them was messaging me at like 11 o'clock on a Saturday night going, You're a fucking bear in, mate. <laughs> I'm like, Have you got nothing better to do with your time? <laughs> mate, see as well, man. See, since you. I noticed, like, see, since you've done the disses and that, see, like, your TikToks. There's always like you get comments, and then there's always a few that are pure. If I was a fucking daft, they done D on top. Like DD four is it? Aye. Aye. DD four on top, man. So there's a mad gang just following you about on your fucking it's social media. It's children. It's like we ain't we guys commenting like that. Fucking that's better not be about. I've not got a name there because I've already given them enough followers but uh, a, wee, a wee guy commented on like, the disc video I better know be about what said the guy's name and I was like mate it literally says the guy's name plus the disc <laughs> <laughs> I told him it was a wee ginger 11 year old I'm like come on you fuck man <laughs> so uh, I and that was the thing and I just I've had to end up just patching them now mate because mm-hmm. As I say, it's taking up my focus. Plus, yeah. as well, you end up in that back and forward. Not, I mean, you know yourself. You're getting sponsors involved and all that. And you're right. You're right. Be taking seriously. Aye. It's maybe doing about a business with people. That shit. It just pulls you back, Aye. man. And it's just wasted energy, isn't it, bro? Yeah. Like it's, it's like your energy can put, be put into you instead of trying to like. Because when your energy is on, like, they and I'm going to slaughter them, I'm bringing them down, aye. you're, like, no focusing on what you're doing, and, aye, you know? Aye. You're fo- and, and all it is, as you say, is, like, key and name shit aye. as well. And that's what, that's what it always is, bro. Like, we obviously don't have any, like, rappers saying entities, but, like, sometimes you get podcasts, it's, like, just you see them can I try to start a wee bit of beef in that like, that's just so that they can aye. get aye. Their, and, it's never, and it's never, it's never ones that get like you'll never get somebody who's getting hundreds of views that are like I'm going to go and slaughter this cunt do you know what I mean it's always if they're on a downward fucking ah, yeah, it's like, like, day, day, it's like man desperation exactly, sort of thing. exactly. Like, that's the way I've seen it with the two of them because I'm doing my favour keeping them alive you know what I mean but uh, <clears throat> as I say the way I seen it at first, I was like, ah, right, basically, I wanted somebody to diss me, I wanted to diss somebody, but plus as well, I was like, ah, I can fucking promote my show, because the tickets weren't doing great, so I had that, I put the wee flyer at the end of it and that kind of thing, and then, as I say, I just end up going like, ah, because I've got a sponsor through CA and all that kind of shit, and I end up speaking to him about it, and he's like, ah, mate, you need to starve at oxygen, because it's just, it's, you're just feeding negativity, it's just going to end up, it's like a game of tennis, two of are just batting the ball back to each other until one of grabs the ball and walks half, so he's like, ah, just starve it now, because he, and he actually says, he's like, it's starving your creativity now. I was like, you know what, you're right. So I just ended up patching it. And uh, as I say, I just went and focused, right, I need to promote this show and that kind of thing. Then uh, I ended up supporting Jordan McCann. So How was he? What was he like, man? He seems mental. Soundest cunt ever. Brand new. Oh, he's sound. You can tell he's half his nut, but, <laughs> but I mean, right. he's the soundest <laughs> cunt in the world, mate. So basically he put up on his, uh, like his Instagram, I think it was a few months ago, just basically saying, tag on a Scottish artist so you can support me. I'm playing Glasgow. So I seen it and I shared it to hundreds of cunts. I was like, tag me in the comments. But I was doing it for a laugh. I was like, I didn't think you'd have said it. Aye. But so when people were tagging me, I was replying back to them in the comments. So he would have seen my name twice for, like, for every comment. He'd seen my Aye, name yeah. twice. And also I had that bright profile fucking uh, picture. Aye. It was like a bright t-shirt. So I'd done a wee tune called Scottish about being Scottish, funnily enough. And he commented on it, like one of the lyrics saying, obviously I loved it and that kind of thing. So I was like, I thought he's went and checked out my shit. And uh, the next day, the tickets went and sold for Glasgow, and I bought two tickets, and I tagged him in it, and then he voice noted me, going like, ah, fucking proud of you, mate. He's like, I'll get you up to do that tune, that. Oh, that's class. So how's that result? Mate, the thing with you, uh, you is as well, like, he probably, like, uh, there's, all, there's a lot of good Scottish rappers in there, right? We obviously had fucking Benny T on, who I, who I rate massively. I think he's brilliant. We had Spexy on. Like, there's a lot of good people, but yours is so different. He probably was like, I've not heard anything like that. Uh, no, I mean that's I probably mean, like pure goat. You can it? tell he does. He obviously does his homework and off. He's gone and looking at the tunes and fucking. Uh, he's yeah. actually like specifically like this one. It's like mm. own merit. Uh, the, the I, goat that, isn't definitely because there was a few. <coughs> there was a few people that go to do the show through because their manager they put on the show and there was a few few people Jordan the can of hand picked. But I think 
that was like one of the only ones me and an boy were one of the only ones that he didn't know for beforehand aye. but aye it's, that's the thing as well with Master I feel as for some people it might be a breath of fresh air because when I listen to a lot of songs even I hear the same shit all the time it does put me off so I'm always looking for something totally different that's what I try and translate Mate, to my music do you know what I think your tunes kind of sound like you ever listen to Shorty Horror no he's a mad Manchester kind of used to be a mad battle rapper right. but he's heavy and he like Mad uh, 90s Manchester music, so like Oasis right. and Stone Roses and that. And he does mad tunes that's like wee bits of rapping, but then like big long fucking guitar bits and bobs. Not I mean, it actually sounds like that when I've Is he like tunes. a current rap artist or was he um, like fairly I think that was like, like he started doing the kind of tunes in like 2018 or something. I think that's right, so he's quite, quite recent. So it's no too, I know too far away, but it's, it's good. He's just about him like hanging right. about in Manchester and we're kind of wee fucking. I like Oasis say kind of guitars and that behind it, know what I mean? But can I rap them a bit as well? Aye. That's kind of what it reminds me. I thought you'd have known them, but because oh, it is quite man, I wish I did know, because see, that's the thing as well. Partly the reason why I'm trying to, because obviously I do the rap bear beats, I do some of the singing song tunes, but I'm trying to combine the two because, especially in Scotland, I don't see many people doing it. No. no. And I like that, I like that niche, because even I say to people, like, oh, what kind of music do you make? And I go, indie rap. They're like, really? <laughs> it's <laughs> that, I'm like, that's the fucking niche there, Aye. I need, because. It's, you're, you're, you're getting put in like a pure comparison if you're doing yeah. it. But a lot of people look at the Scottish like, rap scene. There's so many people who've been doing it long with me. There's more established me. And then it's all and, drill and shit as well. Aye, yeah. uh, so, and plus with that, if you're making drill music, people don't really connect with it if it's that kind of I've stabbed this cunt done that cunt don't be right I've done some mad shit in my life but there's a lot of it I'm no, I wouldn't like to glorify in it. Mate, see, uh, the thing is, I know, man, and I think, like, the thing is, personally, I think that's right. See the whole drill thing, right? So if you're like rapping at a drill beat mm-hmm. and you're like, it's a mad hard beat and you're like, see, unless you're saying all that shit, it's a hard sell. It's no, because uh, there's people out there like, if you're just like rapping about, I did this and I did that and I did this, but it's no like, it's no violent in that. Nice. People are going to be like, it's like there's a mad extreme version of that which people are going to be drawn to and it's like sexy or so it's a mad pure wall like so it's hard to kind of make yourself stone out when you're no doing that and then you but also at the same time you don't want to like live you're that's fucking stabbed him and all that and you're like you you wear like fluffy pyjamas do you know what I mean like it's fucking (laughs) putting a bit in that aye aye so aye it's totally right it's all about being authentic and that kind of thing don't get me wrong I like to I like to try and be as diverse as I can see and I listen to a bit of drill and that kind of stuff but I realise that's when I listen to drill music hear something don't get me wrong some kind of going I've fucking done this done, I've uh, fucking done the gym uh, and all that but for me to go and try and do that and you think of the generation if you're speaking to like the like 18 year olds now, these are ones that have been exposed to like GTA and fucking uh, internet and fucking they've seen cunt frog it. I think you're a what well, obviously we were probably exposed to internet as well like of an age where you're going to search and like just Russian cunt getting chopped up to uh, fucking, uh, and yeah. you're, you're exposed to all that yeah, so you're desensitised exactly uh, bestgold.com bro that uh, set me up for everything you really? ever watch it I'm not too sure about the name but I remember watching bro. one it was like a cunt in the woods they were like fucking ham- was it two, two guys one hammer or something uh, was, and it was like in Russia and it was just mate do you know what happened with that like they just found a mad homeless guy and just took him into the woods and just for no reason mate but there was no reason behind it they just were nutters oh, mind so video remember uh, two girls one cup you ever ah, I remember oh, that I mean, what, about, what about one two guys one ice pick I know I mean that oh, oh no I'm no, not no, 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 there's a full documentary about that on fucking what could you explain what happened I think it's in that don't fuck with cats is that one right, bro I've, yeah, seen yeah, that. I've seen that I've seen that so he goes for like a, he goes for like getting cats and doing heavy bad shit to them putting them in like vacuum bags and that's fucking horrible mm. but then he goes on and the internet like hundreds of cunts through the world up here try to find them by like looking at plug sockets and going right that's Ukraine and that's this and that's that in the videos and then but the, the last thing he does is uh I like invites a guy up to his flat and he's got a mad fucking ice pick mate and he just fucking goes for it with him man just actual chops him up to bits. Oh, so did, is that what like, made into a video? Did he make that into a video? Aye, so he's videoing all these mad white like, uh, wild shit he's doing and then it turned out to be if I'm remembering right it turned out to be a mad semi-famous guy like a guy that was a model at one point he'd mate, act, he'd I don't know uh, mate I've, I've heard a full was it an Austrian guy? No? I think so mate, mate I, it was, blonde looking, I, cause I, I listened to there was a last podcast in the F-series Jack something because it, it was this guy who was like a murderer right and he he like he done I don't know if it's the same guy right it might not be but this guy like done hundreds of horrible shit right but he was like an actor and he was this sort of famous guy and he got to jail right but then this was like in the 90s and it was like a time where I think it was Austria the Austrian government were like in this mad programme of like let's know like let's reform people instead of just locking them up so 
he was like made to be like the post because he was a he was like a pure psychopath so he was in the jail and he was like doing classes and like he was acting like a pure good cunt and they're like oh this is the perfect guy to bring out and like show that we're going to reform people and look at this guy look what he's done and we'll bring him out and he's he's sound now and all that and they got him at the jail and they were pure praising him and he was a mad celebrity in that and he just was killing still killing he killed killed 40 people aye mate and he moved to America and done the exact same shit that's how they just let him out the jail that's a different guy this one was more recent because it was all about the internet it was all about Netflix I remember seeing it on Netflix but see it was that long ago it was kind of hazy with the end I remember I remember being famous you shouldn't just say that kind of rang a bell kind of I don't even know why that popped into my head because of the two guys with ice packs aye 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 that one's fucking insane Jamie not I sure do love what do you love Evan clothing oh do you really I would say clothes are probably one of my Honestly, one of my favourite things. See, I do enjoy clothes, but I just don't know where to get them. I don't know where to get them. I don't know. I don't you know didn't the idea where to get no, any. No, like, people always talk about clothes. <laughs> how did you I'm, get, like, all this stuff? Just, just fuzzle. Like, just, I, I just wake up in the morning and it's there. You know what I mean? So it you just, sleep in it and that? Right, like, I don't know. Did you know make this in your bedroom or something? Like, I don't know how clothes I don't know where that came from, mate. But, um, look, if you are looking for clothes trips... And now a lot of people are looking for clothes, like young Jamie here. He's, if you're not sure where to ever buy clothes, um, the best thing for you to do would be to visit Kentaro Clo. Now, Kentaro Clo are what I would describe it as maybe a bit of a personal shopper, Jamie. Oh, I would like describe that. it as you know how like you go a say you're going to one of the famous festivals that go on all over the nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to your oh your big dot your terminal V's yeah, oh. your Riverside yeah, yeah. Even your Glastonbury's, yeah? Oh, yeah, I love that. Uh, if we're getting into the big dogs. If you are going to one of these, and now you go and you see somebody and they're wearing like a Nike sort of like windbreaker and mad matching shorts and it's like all cool designs and you're like, i never seen that in the Nike outlet. Ah, you don't Bishy. get like seeing JD at Disney come like that. No. I, they, I always they, end up with like a red tap and green shorts and that. It just doesn't look... Mate, they don't, even, they don't even stock half it, mate. No, exactly, So mate. that's where Kentaro Co are going to come in. So they are a website that offers all things active wear clothing and footwear. And they specialise in Nike and Under Armour jackets, t-shirts and full sets. So could that be if you were what I... Say, say I'm, I've been going to the gym, right? Aye. Obviously, I wear my gym jeans every time I go to the gym. Aye, aye, the classic. But, like, you get laughed at in that because, like, gym Who's gym, laughing at you? Hunters, like, everybody doing it at Mountain Muscle House laughs at my jeans, bro. So, see if I was wanting to up my, my gym clays game. Yes. Do you think this would suit? I think 100%, mate. He's got gym well, he's got... I mean, but even at, even at that, it's like gym wear that you could definitely wear. Fashionable shit, bro. Fashionable gym wear, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all the range. So, troops. Also, what a class thing is... They offer clear pay and Klarna, so everything can be paid for in instalments, which is a massive help. Like me, I get paid weekly. Mm-hmm. Like a good old dish. Uh, cash. You get in the office, you get your fucking paper, you get right in the bookies and waste for the whole lawyer, eh? <laughs> See, you don't live good that week, because you're fucking kicked out of the house. That's the worst thing, the bookies is next to the boozer, and you're obviously uh, going for a pint, and you spend all your money in the house. I'm psycho. Back in the rat race, son. So um, they're going to sort you out with Klarna and Clearpay. I mean, we couldn't make it any more obvious. So you're looking at the website right now. Go and have a wee scroll through it. And when you're buying something, when you're buying those summer, summer gums, use the code GAFF, G-A-F-F, at checkout, and you'll get 15% off anything you buy. So stock up, get that 15% off, make sure it's a good wee chunk you're getting off. And yes, um, enjoy your summer, baby. Cheers. So you just gone back to like when you were younger and that, because <clears throat> I, the first time I started seeing your stuff in that was like, I remember it was just you on your podcast, just sitting with your tag on, talking about the jail and that. And I, I always wondered like, because see me and you knew, right? I'm like, you seem quite a, an intelligent guy and you seem quite reflective and like you think about how you're thinking about things and your energy and like you, do, you seem very like, I couldn't actually imagine you getting the jail and doing all this shit. Ah, you can't do, so, can't that. so, so you just gone back to like before you were even like this. Like, what sort of shit were you up to, to sort of lead into that? 
Well, when the very first time I get to jail, aye, the first aye, time aye. I ever get to jail, I was about 17. See, to be honest, mate, I was never really a fucking weird bad cunt, but it's every time I've got to jail, drugs have been involved in terms of I've been on something. Or, so I kind of made that connection with fucking, obviously, one of the last times I got to jail. Like, how the fuck do I keep ending up in here? <laughs> Anytime I end up. Oh, oh, it was that ounce of prop. But uh, the first time, obviously, when I was about 17, 16, 17, I was kicking about with the scheme, but I wasn't a fucking goddamn yeah, man. Just, 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 just trying to get in a different. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even get in a disc for getting in the jail. Stabbing a cut like this must get me in there. Didn't even get in a disc for getting in the jail. Fuck's sake. <laughs> but uh, I saw so the first time, mate, the very first time I got a jail seat, to be honest, I was, I was never the greatest criminal. No, I mean, I was shite at getting away with stuff. <clears throat> Don't give me that when I was about 16, that fucking skint nah, I used to go about pure worst cunt movie, I'll probably get hated forever. I used to see you sat navs at a cunt's motors. Oh. Me and that boy <laughs> just goes to about the night and smash it. Mate, that's a bad 90s crime, bro. Oh, <laughs> mate, that's, I'm showing my age. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, bro. It's like fucking, I was just always one of the things going about pure petty crime like that. I remember one time fucking we ended up, we were in a place called. A, a very posh area next to my scheme. I don't want to fucking sit and say that's your name because it's still an outstanding case. But the fun was this Mitsubishi Warrior. See the big fucking Jeep pings? And we've climbed in it and there's the keys still been in ignition. Like, well, fucking grabbed that, pocketed it. Went away then. One day it was like an old fun. A Sunday every cunt's pure mad way at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Like, I'm not going to go up and steal that. Still the keys. <laughs> I, I carried the keys. I'm out of ways, though. No. I mean, this is how good I can. I was like, what the fuck are they? I was sober, I just turned up. I think I turned up to this old fun game. <clears throat> or they were watching it. They were all mad when I just turned up just with a set of keys. <laughs> so. We've marched up to this motor, 20 handed that, climbed in, my fucking, one of the boys, he's been doing his uh, provisional, like, like his uh, lessons, so he's got in the front, we're all jumping in the back, because we've got hammers and shit like that, built, <laughs> but he's, so he's driving this motor, and so in these, these Mitsubishi Warriors, there's like a fucking, like a stick for the gears, and another stick, aye, for, for like the four wheel drive, and aye, I so, used to have a warrior. So, uh, did you? I had four wheel drive. was that still the first time you to go bro? Oh, mate, see, boys. See, you're an old fun. It didn't actually go far, so this boy's driving it, we're going up, up the hill right from where it was parked he's doing all the movements I'm watching him I just can't know what's like knows how to drive <laughs> so he's went up and down and, and we stopped see uh, a give way a main road so it's many ones there's two lanes going that way then like a wee see the middle embankment bit then there's two lanes going that way so he stalled it and he couldn't get the thing moving right so he's jumped out and, uh, and my pal's bras jumped in he's got, the guy's nickname was Jism right so nice. that gives you an idea of the guy nice. you know what I mean he was a bit of a fucking idiot <laughs> the sound come but don't give me a rang and then so he's jumped in man he's like rattling the two gear sticks he's trying to get it going I think his only experience was like driving fucking motors and need for speed so he's hammering the two the two gear sticks but he's got the motor moving but it's gone at a pure snail's pace and fucking it's gone across these fucking two lanes so I'm heavy power right and fucking at this point, I'd take my seatbelt off. I wear a seatbelt and a stolen motor. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm safety Mate, conscious. sensible. Uh, so, but I'd taken it off because I thought we were getting out. But when he jumped in, I've had it off. So he started moving it across this fucking this motorway, right? Or there was this fucking knees to steel carriageway thing. And then he's got to the other side. But he started like, turning it into the direction of oncoming traffic but the way they'd come I'm like ah, mate turn it turn it I'm screaming at him man it's pure carnage in this motor and then he's turned it but then he's end up mounting the pavement and it's like going towards this house and this house has got a wall in front of it and I'm like ah, mate at the fucking break I'm screaming at him and it's just kept moving oh. and then <clears throat> I was like I just braced myself as ass is hitting this wall so I, as my belt was off I just kind of held to the dashboard but and it's hit the wall, and I'm like, thank like, fuck, that's it stopped. But he kept his fitting accelerator, so the things end up, it went like a fucking button Broncos, went up like that through the wall, oh. and it's went, it's coming right into this fucking cunt's house, man, and it's came right up to the door, mate, and he's managed to stop it. We were literally parked in the cunt's garden, we've all bounced out, and fucking just started running, mate. I seen a motor, it was driving by, and it had his indicator on, and cunt must have thought it was a crash. You seen just all his pile on it, turned his indicator, I fucked up, <laughs> ah, got off, done. mate piping man but it was shit like that so you just dash Aye. shit funny then uh, one day this is and I'll hang out who fucking I'm looking back in the room and realised like fucking they want to get a jail all the time <laughs> so I was meant to go to the Dominican Republic my bra and that had booked paid the whole day booked for me to go and that I was about 16 and uh, the day before I decided to go out and decide we'd all go for a gang fight the, the, the day before Aye, that's obviously what you did the day before you go so to Dominican Republic so I don't Republic, go for bro. a gang fight it was like a Tuesday <laughs> mate, it was like a Tuesday right so cuts out all get knives and shit nah man I've ended up with a mad kitchen knife and I'm like wait I'm going home tomorrow what fucking what, geez your trackie so I've wrapped a trackie around my head tied it like a fucking mask so I'm stoning about with this trackie wrapped around my head right we went up to this uh, the scheme and went it was, I see a gang fight chasing each other up and doing a lot of shit. 
But I remember being at the top of this hill, and next thing you know, Paul's had pulled around the corner, and they started driving up towards us. Obviously, I'm the tallest cunt there with this uh, fucking thing. <laughs> that I can't see. So they just pointed at me and just belted it. So me being the smart criminal mark, I flung the fucking blade, and it's bounced off a hedge and hit the pavement, and I've started running towards the police. And so I've ran, because I, I don't know why I thought if I ran down the hill, I could run by them, rather than run in the opposite direction. <laughs> so I ran towards them. They've jumped out, and I've pelted it around a corner. And then they've chased after us. Whacked them. They've just turned the motor around and just drove around after us. Bounced it, caught us, huckled. Then uh, they put us in the back of the motor. Then one of them turned up two minutes later like that with a lot back. Somebody else had flung away. I'm like, ah, I've seen him fling that away. Like, you're getting to jail. I was like, ah, what, man? Oh, uh, right. Get taken to the police station. But I thought I was getting out because I was going on hold the next day. I was like, <laughs> ah, no, no, no. But you don't understand this, right? I'll, I'll come back. Aye. <laughs> well, it is, I'm going to Dominican Republic tomorrow, so I had to have a gang fight before I went. <laughs> So uh, sound in it. I, that's me. I was literally, but I was basically nearly on my excuse. I was like, I've gone holding on it. I've got, I've got reasons to get out. <laughs> you're not getting out. You've got a call. Mate, yeah. How mental would you have looked with a tracker out during your head? Probably about six foot two, running towards the post. <laughs> <laughs> they must have shot themselves because they've seen me find something away. I know. I must have thought I was pure inconspicuous. Is all that type of hill, man. I can't. I was tall and never can air. So I've get lifted, man. Then get taken to court the next day. Fucking putting a cuff you. Fucking curfewed up. My mom and all that was away in this whole day, man. It turns out they were... My, I, I phoned my pal and all that. He was like, I mean, your sister turned at my door at six in the morning looking for you and all that, man. Fucking... <laughs> so I had to tell him you were in the jail. Aye. So I missed that then, fucking... Because... I pure had a mad victim complex, right? I was like, oh my god, why is this happening to me? <laughs> see, because they never fund the blade after me, they fund somebody else's blade. I tell myself that I was wrongly accused. <laughs> so, that was my, I was like, I will stick to this curfew, fuck them. Friend. No, 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 <laughs> like, exactly what I was going on, like. Oh, but you don't understand, is, I had a different blade. Mine <laughs> <laughs> was so a, much bigger than that one, mate. That's a wee shame. Exactly, so, I was like, I'm never sticking to this. Look, so, that, that was a Tuesday, but that Friday, I patched the curfew and get, the, get caught, get caught after the same post that jailed me for the oh, knock back. Bro. He, can, he was singing and all that, he was like, breakfast in the jail, all that. Done oh. my first weekender. But I got out after that on the Monday, I done a week, first weekender. That was a fucking experience in their favourite Friday night. See, when you, see, with the first time you're going into this, were you shite yourself or were you like, ah, fuck it? So basically, mate, see, I, the first time I'd get to jail, I don't know, it was one of the ones, it was kind of, I didn't expect to get the jail, so one minute I was in the back of a police van, then I was like, ah, I'm going to court tomorrow, then it was, I was at court, so I was in court with all these guys, and it fucking, it was one guy, it was an English guy, he was fucking, his name was Guy Ritchie. And right. that, it was, it was, it was was he? Big fan, big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it comes as a sex offender, but I didn't oh. know at the time, he's like, oh yeah, I, I got, I found this out years later, that's a funny story. So, I found this out years. I didn't know at the time. I remember just he had a mad funny story. He's like, I got weekend and I was being funny with the police or something. He said he could done me a fucking shoplift, and that was my best impression. <laughs> <laughs> so years later, I was working in the library in Berlin, it, and we'd be working in there when the po- this beast would come down, and he came in, <clears throat> and I remember. So basically, they would go up and let's say what they they would get three books, a DVD and a CD. That was the allowance. But for, they would need to get a book, they would have to need to give their name and you type in their jail number and it would come up if they'd get anything outstanding. And if they had anything outstanding, they couldn't get it until they returned it. So he came up and the screw was in the next computer for me, right? And we were the ones that would make up the name, see if somebody didn't have an account. And uh, he went on that guy's name, Guy Richie's came up, give his name and that. And the screw was like that. Fucking, his first name's my Bowser. My boys and I'm like, nah, what? <laughs> my boys are in shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I could have changed his name. Like, I see the cunt's face, so it's fucking funny as fuck. But, uh, I so going back to that, mate, I saw the first time I was in, like, fucking the cells and that, mate, it was like, it was weird because you were in with cunt's face. Look, man, guy was a drug addict, you had that English guy, you had my, somebody that was my age, a boy, uh, fucking, uh, one of the boys, I don't know, boy Nico, man, he's actually fucking dead alive from now, man. It's like, see, some people you meet and then you just start to call it in. That was the thing as I, well. I think I know who you're talking about. Uh, if I, for you, mate, in fact. I, 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 I think I, I know who you're talking about. Aye, so the first time I met this boy, was in, I'd, I'd met him so many times after that. But that was the thing as well, you just, that's when I kind of realised, I was like, ah, I didn't feel, I felt just odd for everybody because I was like, ah, I shouldn't fucking be here to a degree. No looking down my nose at any kind, but you've got cunts like, oh, I've got fucking five bail acts and I, they're getting their previous in, mate, and it's that thick and all that shit. And I'm like, ah, the lad, you, uh, who's your lawyer? And I'm like, ah, what's a lawyer? Not, I mean, <laughs> not that bad, but I was like, what the fuck? Right. And then. And Lee Sutherland was obviously no kicking about oh, this time, so you went there. Man, was busy. fucking hell, where would you leave? You could have got you at that, bro. Oh, hi, definitely, mate. Got me out of that, and then a fucking life sentence, bro. 
his blade was massive three guys and his blade had blood on it so uh, I and it was like as I say the first time I got out so see to be honest I was still that immature way because you're in the cells you've got cunts shouting at each other banding each other up so I thought it was hilarious but I, I, I've got a fucking a, a shite ability to remember shite experiences so whenever I have a shite experience I'm like this is terrible this is pish see the minute I'm out I'm like you ask forgot all about aye, it so aye, I don't like remember like a puppy almost nah you know, <laughs> the puppy who lost its way <laughs> the puppy who lost its way <laughs> <laughs> the new album name uh, <laughs> so mate aye so after I, the first time I get I get out after breaching the curfew then I think it was like 17 days it was like two weeks before the, the actual trial date and I'm like I'm not playing to this none of this shit I get caught breaching the curfew and they're like ah, right you breached it twice you're getting remanded so that was the first time I got to Pullman I was like ah, what? I'm going to the jail <laughs> the, so jail, the jail jail so the, the first I'd heard a Pullman I thought was like that boy's behind bars do you remember that ah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was like ah, pure, I'm still standing there and raising his hand going come on oh, <laughs> mate it was like pure that heavy man cultural phenomenon so ah, I'd always seen that about Pullman or heard I was in Pullman or can't talk ah, about Pullman I would ask him about it see he's curious so I was like ah, I'm actually got a fucking Pullman now so it was kind of it was kind of like got to open towers. I'm but no one excited. <laughs> but, ah, it was weird. It was like I fucking got to Hogwarts or something. So I turned up and I was just pure like, what the fuck? What house are you in? We have a phone in there. I mean, so I was actually lucky. One of the guys in my bus, he was like 20, right? And uh, it was his first time up in the jail and it was a cunt. I cunt pure snake them and all. So I think this guy, right, there was a guy gone back to the jail that was going down. So if, if you're in the jail and you've got a court date, you get taken down through the jail and get brought back. So sometimes if people get freshly demanded off the street, they call it. So if you come in off the street, you come back in the same bus with somebody that's come down for the jail. Does that make sense? Aye, aye. aye. So this guy, he came in off the street, get demanded, same day as me, and uh, we were on the bus going back with this guy that was already in there, and this cunt's like, to my mate, just tell him you miss your brains and all that, just tell him fucking, ah, you're, you're suicidal and that, and they'll sort you out with a detox, they'll give you scribs and that. The cunt's like, ah, result and that, pure buzzing. <laughs> Went up and told them they fucked them in suicide watch. <laughs> oh, oh mate, no. Sell me fucking pe- like plastic mattress, mate, light <laughs> on. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> mate, my jumpsuit, mate, done him a fucking belter and all. Oh my so God. I, I, I kind of dodged the bullet with that, man, but it was, it was a mad experience just going in and uh, I get dubbed up with a boy a boy uh, Sean Craig boy for Royston man fucking brand new so it, was, it turns out my mum was actually pals with his auntie but uh, he was my age so it was good I get dubbed up with him because that's the thing as well seeing you go to jail it's always like right I'm going to jail then the next thing you read is who am I getting dubbed up with Aye, could be anybody, because man. mate it's like that's scary Did they, see, when, see like when they or like doing that is it like random is it just totally random just whoever's got space if Aye. there's somebody in their cell Aye. it's just it doesn't matter unless no See if you're a non-smoker, they kind of put you in a smoker, and then if you, aye. Well, how, why is that? Can just you smoke in your cell? Uh, aye. Well, you used to it used to be able to get fags in that man, but uh, it's no all vapes. But if you're a non-smoker, they don't put you in a smoker. Oh, really? I aye. love how like that's the concern. Not I mean, can't <laughs> I get the point in that? Uh, we can't have smoking in this non-smoker <laughs> zone. Aye, aye, aye. Because fucking shit stabbing cunt. P Gabba's valley. Let's kill me as long as they smoke. It's not even a concern for you. I think it's just in case you end up trying to sue them. In case, like, maybe you end up right. developing fucking asthma or some shit like that and you should like, I want a claim just can't just try to chase a claim so uh, I get put in with this boy and he was my age uh, young and all man he was in for the exact same things me breaching the curfew so like, oh, fuck's sake man but uh, he was brand new so and actually I fucking get put do- next door to a boy I was pal away for outside so I was like ah, do you know this boy and is he in here and he's like, a holiday man I mean that's what he was like <laughs> he was like, I was like uh, he's like do you know any kids in the jail and I said ah boy so and so and that man and he's like ah, mate he's next door <laughs> bang the wall right? so if you want to talk to cunts see next door you bang the wall and you go to the windy mate the windy's like a wee slat like that and also you've got like that much of fucking air so you're at the windy and cunts would all so you'd be like three separate landings and you'd all be separated each other and it would just be noise secrets and a man all cunts shouting on each other cunts Aye. bamming each other up so I was next door to him which wasn't too bad so I think that made it easier mm-hmm. but I was just kind of like that bewildered like, I'm in the fucking jail but as soon as it hit the weekend obviously you're young you're how, lo- how long were you in that for that, that time? very first time was only 17 days because I was remanded right. to my trial date right. and uh, so I was like I was pure having the time of my life I was fucking I ended up getting dubbed up with two other cunts I couldn't for Dundee and this guy for Sterling but I was a pure shithead man I was setting one of the guys my season five they know I'm mad shit bam them up I'm just getting pure restless uh, and then there was cunts at the windies bamming cunts up windy warriors it's called so I was at the windies all night just fucking bamming cunts up thinking it was hilarious man and uh, the night this is I feel Feel bad for this and then sorry uh, fucking John and I though I'm fucking I wish I never done this I feel <laughs> I think about this at night so 
Them next door didn't have a kettle, and we had a kettle, and he's like, ah, mate, what is a favour? We've not got a kettle, near no Guinness one. <coughs> See, when you're getting out, what to use your kettle? Like, ah, no bother, mate, I'll give you my kettle. So the night I fought, right, I got to your kettle, and I went in the toilet and I shat in it. I fucking <laughs> big bet I filled the kettle, mate. The kettle's like, I fucking filled it right up, man. And I sat with that kettle all night in my, in my room. I had to cover up. Why did you do the night before? <laughs> I don't know, because I thought, because it didn't no need in the morning, bro. Ah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, ah, I can't waste this shit. This was my thinking at the time. I shat in the cunt's kettle, man. I had to cover it up. It was stinking, man. And then uh, I went the next day and then like, ah, mate. He, ba- he banged my wall first thing in the morning before the, the breakfast goes around about six he was up before the breakfast he's like I'm choking for a cup of tea oh, oh, no, no, that's that's sick, mate, see looking back now <clears throat> looking back now I'm like I feel pure bad see at the time I was like yes I was pure rubbing my horns see that time like when you like because to, to me like, at this time right the feel what you're telling me like you're kind of, it seems to me like you're just like, this is like what my life is like. No, I mean, you're not like, fuck, I need to like sort that shit out. You're like, it's a laugh. Like, no, I mean, you're just, I just try to enjoy I, the best you seem, of it. You seem like, at that time, I don't know what you, don't know about now, but you're like, just living like moment to moment. You're not like, uh, I'm not got a mad plan. Like, I'm going out of here and start dating. Like, you're like, oh, I'm going to ban this cunt up. Like, just try to amuse yourself almost. Uh, I right to the last day, because in my head, I tell, because when I, so I was remanded until my trial date. So in my head, I'm getting out. Ah, but yeah, yeah. I was going up for trial for something that I clearly done. I had evidence against us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, ah, I'm getting away with this. Pure clueless, mate. I was lucky. I never came. I, I was actually. So I gave him the fucking shit in. And uh, fucking literally. Literally him, the shit in. I literally <laughs> gave him the shit in. I heard his door shut. And I just started walking to go where the courts were going. Out, and I just heard them two minutes later bang the door. Yeah, fucking dirty bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming, me. Turns out the guy I was uh, dubbed up with, this guy for Sterling, he went to court the same day as me. He was up. So. See, for a serious case, it's called an indictment. So you initially get demanded for like seven or eight days. It's called like an eight day. It's like, no, it's an eight day lie down. So you date eight days and get back and you can either get bail or get a fully committal, which is like 140 days and demanded to a trial. So he was going up to see if he got his fully committal. So this guy get fully committed, came back and uh, they'd get the, the shitey kettle back in and that couldn't get put in the portal on it for it oh, and, uh, no. and they get made to clean it. This guy. Oh my I'm God, sorry, it. bro. I know. Do you still know, you still know this, boy? No, I've not seen him since. I hope he's still alive, man. Imagine dumping my shit out of a kettle. No, I mean, imagine the actual physical thing I did in that, bro. It, no, Oh, that. no, but, man. And I wonder if he used it. Because Hinky, because the kettles, oh. if they've got it back in, he said to clean it. That kettle's been in that room since. Bro, wee bit of hot water, a lemon, bit of baking soda, get the shit oil, bro, your sound. How many people think of eight mat shitty noodles? Oh, my God, Mate, man. that's what I was going to say, because, like, I don't know much about prison life, right? I, I don't know anything. I watch Prison Break, that's about it, right? <laughs> but I follow this kid on TikTok who does, like, uh, just, um, just, like, ev- like just kind of day of life in the jail kind of thing, right? And he, he puts... He, no Sam Walker, is it? It might be, Sorry, bro. Is it might be. No, it doesn't talk. It's just like making uh, my dinner. Uh, no. He's not got a lot of followers. It just popped up one day, but right. he does one like uh, making a curry in the in the jail, and he's got like a rice kettle, a curry kettle, and then like a tea kettle, and he puts plain cards like cards in the wee window bit uh-huh. and covers it up, <clears> and then he makes a curry in the fucking in a kettle, and then makes rice in the other kettle, and then just like and I, I was like watching that, and I was looking at the comments, and I was like, it was like that. Somebody said like. Your, your tea will be barking the morrow or something and he was like no I've got three kettles I've got four kettles mate like for different things I just thought that was like a mad is that like a currency in the jail if you've got a kettle no so much the kettle it's just like uh, you get some cunts that have got like, a few more things than others what I know it's a, a big thing that the jail is a remote control for the telly is it bro oh aye. mate see if you've not got a remote it's, oh. no everybody's got a remote you're kind of seen as a bit more cush if you've got a remote aye. so <laughs> the last, time, good, bro. Uh, gonna... last time I was in there mate I ended up with two mattresses and two remotes and I felt like a king I was in the fucking jail because <laughs> that's the thing see if you've not got a remote so you're in bunk bed so see if you're in the tap bunk like, if you just go in there's a guy rodly there you're in the tap bunk see if you're watching the telly at night he falls asleep and you're gouching you need to get up climb up and go and turn the telly off and climb back into your bed it's fucking annoying man Aye. so once you've got a remote but mate it's you- mad how in the jail there's these mad like it's just a it's a full other like life obviously and it's like other things like I, I was watching I was watching fucking Brooklyn Nine-Nine right and right. it made a mad joke about like currencies in the jail how it used to be snout and they're like we've got no need for cigarettes anymore it's all about ramen noodles so it was like <laughs> that was the mad currency if you could get them for the outside and you got shit for the G- uh, yeah, phones oh, and all really, that really? and it's just mad shit like that. <laughs> I, like that was obviously that's a mad exaggeration uh, but it's done mad shit like that like ah, well when I was in the remote mate what I know it was heavy valuable see a coloured links 
See a little Lynx shiver gel. Aye. See you get one, just the black tub. That's what they sell in the canteen. But cunts would acquire these, like, the see-through ones oh. with different colours. <laughs> so, uh, the, bright, I, the brighter, the better. Oh, uh, bro. Oh, mate, I had, so at one, when I was in Pullman, I ended up this mad collector with him, man. This is pure autism. It is not, I was buying like Lynxes for like 12 quid and all that. Went to God just because of the colour and all that shit, man. Cunts were coming to me with shit because I was buying mad shit. I was spending my money in piss. Walking about, walking about the jail smelling like mangoes. <laughs> you would never use them. You no. Use, no, I would buy them just for display. Is that a status symbol? Uh, it's a display thing. So I ended oh, up, God. mate, by the time I got out, mate, I had all these different colours. There's ones called... <laughs> colours I didn't hear, they're like fucking snake peels and all that shit, street, man. Street colours, we call them, innit? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I had, I had wee mini ones and all that, mate. Cunts used to come to my door just to look at my shiver gels. Thank God. So you'd set it up in your wee unit and I'd put a lamp behind it. I ended up with a lamp. I know a lamp was a kind of. <laughs> you, know, you ever seen a bit of Mary a boy so when I fucking ended up in, uh, doing it my four and a half year in Pullman I went to the long was term that after, was that what you end up getting no but for the knifing no this was so when, for the knifing I'll take you back I went so when I went to court that day for the trial I took it through a trial I actually took the stand and all that shit and was arguing the PF <laughs> yeah fucking died I, I was like I was pure like the cunt I was like mate I never threw the, 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 the blade away somebody else did and like who did and I'm like I'm not fucking grass <laughs> there was coppers and the guy was just laughing like just like shaking her head like you're Fuck. I was lucky I get fun guilty obviously but I get community service and probation I never done oh, a day you, eh? ah, yeah, I never done a day to see yes but I just you know oh that? mate I'm allergic how to did, community did you get away with that no so <laughs> this was in August of 2009 right so I got out then and fucking I just went I wasn't gonna fuck end up no long after end up carrying a blade again no intention of using it just carrying it for a status thing get a blade he's got a blade he's, uh, like, he's fucking got a blade on him mm-hmm. and it was just seen Mary I don't know, made you feel big uh, then uh, I end up seeing this bird man and she was a fucking heat case man just her heat was fried man and it was just one of the ones it was I'm one of see I've gotten a fucking addiction for toxic personalities man see birds that are interested in me what I get to know me I've no interest see birds that are fucking pure what I fucking lead me up the garden path oh come here you man <laughs> I'm chasing them mate I'm a sucker so uh, she was like that man just a pure mad fucking heat nip she obviously had mad issues and uh she would just fucking pure she was frying my nut to the point where I was just see that way I was like a fucking ticking time bomb to a point remember one night I ended up going to this fucking party it was like 21st and uh, her sister was there but her sister was uh, gone with one of my pals at the time so <clears throat> I knew her on like a friendly basis and uh, she messaged me this bird was uh, gone me at the time saying I, this guy he's just came back for that party uh, so she was in this house this guy's house but it was, she was with her, his sister that makes sense. Aye, aye, aye. Sorry, I wasn't sure if I was getting up too many aye, no, details. No, no, no. So she was there. So this guy's came back and uh, she's like, ah, he said you were filing my sister and that. And I was like, ah, what? No, that kind of thing. It was a merry an argument kind of thing. And I was like, what the fuck? Her sisters end up in the phone to her and that. She's like, ah, I don't care. No, that shit. Talk this last ever seen. But I was, it was one of the first nights I took gear. I couldn't give me a line in the toilet. Pure wrinkled up fucking snotty fiber. <laughs> one of the A1 sniffed it. Oh. I was into my Ekkies at the time. So I was kind of like, ah, fucking use it. And then, uh, I remember going back and uh, I had this blade on me and I was like, ah, we went back to this lassie's sister's house and the, the house was basically like, through the back for this guy she was in and I was like, ah, I can't fucking get it. And uh, I went round and uh, I fucking, it was a bit hazy, man. I think I was banging around the windies and all that. That's what the poles were saying. And I was rattling the door and all that. The doors opened, her pals came out and I'm like, ah, fucking tell him to go here, tell him to go to the new and all that. And uh, she's kind of laughing like, mate, get a fucking that. And he's kind of appeared behind her like, what the fuck's going on? Obviously, I'm causing it at the fucking front door. Uh-huh. So he's like, what the fuck's going on? I'm like, you fucking out here, the new, fucking out. And I was like, you said I was filing to her sister. And he was like, ah, I was kidding on. And I was like, fucking get out here and that. And the kids obviously had enough. He's like, oh, come here, you in, crack this. So as he's cracked this, I've just grabbed him and just started. I felt like I was punching him at that bite. I knew I had a blade in my hand, but I don't know. I think because I was getting punched, I was just, uh, no, had no compass meant this, but I was actually doing, so I was stabbing him. But as I was stabbing him, like the blade was shutting, so it was shutting in my finger, so I've got fucking scars there. So it's still quite numb there. So I'm doing that, and then I'm opening it and stabbing him again. As he's punching us, so I was just in my own fucking uh, world. And uh, I've been mid swing stabbing him, man. The cunt's just collapsed and it's caught him right in the jaw. And as I've been, I've kind of pulled it right in his face. Oh. And see, see that way, I don't know, imagine like chalking a chalkboard. See that, uh, like that. That's how it felt. It was also running along his teeth. Oh, bro. Oh, mate, it was horrible. Oh, it, it, his mask dropped in front of his like, ah, That's fucking enough. That's nasty. Aye, right, mate. Then I've kind of like that. Ah, and I've looked at my horns, were covered in blood. And I had this blade. And I was kind of. Did you, like, was it like a mad? No, how, like, if you've been like fleeing or something and you like just realise you've done something heavy. Ah, you're just like, coming you, back to it. Like, like, what, what are you saying, bro? And you're like, ah, and I, it's a mad realisation. Was it like it, that? It, 
was to a degree, I was, it wasn't as if I was like, oh my god, I've just stabbed him, I just kind of looked and I was like, fuck, I've just done him, and then the pilot was at the door the first time, she's kind of stepped ahead, like, did you just stab him, and just started pure greeting, and I was like, I'm out of here, so I've jumped, I've ran around the corner, and flung the blade into her back garden, went back up to <laughs> Didn't her, didn't for the first time, <laughs> 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 oh, mate, it's even <laughs> worse, <laughs> I flung it in her back garden, right, went up to her sister's, got washed, and just started getting on it, just, I never thought oh, it in twice, oh, me, man. she's phoned this, like, uh, uh, fucking, what the fuck did you do, all that for nothing, and I was like, you see, I was bathing your sister, and she was like, he was kidding on, I knew that, and I was like, what? And they kind of fucking, so he'd been bamming her up, and she's pure truth trying to make a hang out of it, and it's ended up backfiring, but, and she's like, ah, here, he's in fucking high dependency, he's fucked and all that, and then, <clears throat> obviously, as I say, the house was like around the corner, so I've seen all sorts of blue lights and that can buy, so I was like, I better get back and get that blade, so I've jumped down the stair, and when it was snowing and all that, it was, there was snow in the ground, and I've went, I've been jumping the backs trying to find the blade, so I'm jumping all these backs, couldn't find it, and then end up just going back up the house, fucking, and then stayed oh, there, get on it. it. Did it snow out the tarpet or something? No, it, there was already snow down, oh, so it? it was like, as if it had been snowing, it was, there was snow in the grass, but there wasn't snow in the street uh, on top of it, uh, uh, so uh, it was uh, one uh, of I don't know if it, when it fucking a bad, could, a bad garden's a bad place to fly in it because it's just like I wake up in the morning with my coffee like fuck's that big blade I know <laughs> I know mate and I've been covered in fucking blood because uh, I just launched it but I was I went back to try and find it I was having no chance so went back went home and then like, when I woke up the next day obviously sobered up and all that kind of thing and I was like ah, fuck I just fucking done a cunt last night and I always thought I was trying to kind of will it into myself like, ah, yeah, I'm fucking after that but I, there was a part of me that was like ah, what the fuck have I just done aye. and then I was kind of it went about a day it had not well I've constantly been meshing me man but saying nah, the police are fucking looking for you all that kind of shit then I was I remember uh, was, my body clock was a bit fucked man so I remember got to like, bed and I was just lying in bed it was like, getting into 4 or 5 in the morning I hadn't slept yet and I had my headphones in and I was listening to Beyonce Sweet Dreams <laughs> a sweet dream on a beautiful night I fucking loved that soon right I had all these mad poppy dreams <laughs> And see that way you, you, you get the eyes are shut, but you see the light come on. And I opened my eyes and I just seen a squad of polis of all like oh. the sooty and booty just like that fucking they were like pointing us talking. And like, I took the headphones off, like keep your hands where I can see them. Honcuffed is in the bed, man. And I jailed us, oh, man. Oh. That's, that's uh, some tune to get jailed to, innit? I know, Beyonce, <laughs> man. <laughs> I didn't tell her to get to jail, but uh, 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 I arrest him, man. <laughs> but, uh, I get jailed for that, I get taken to fucking. Aitken Heath Road, man, a four station, and that's when I was like, ah, fuck, but it was weird, I don't, I don't fucking realise the consequences of my action until I get hit with them, so I'm always like, in my head, maybe I'm a bit too positive, like, ah, yeah. that's just not, I'm getting a fucking, if I get a sentence, I'll get about two years and that, uh, the fucking, my lawyer's turned up, like, I mean, if he dies, you're getting about an 18 for this and all that, and, and was like, he still on, was he still in hospital? Uh, at that so point? I think he was a bit touch and go, so, uh, he ended up, obviously survived, and, uh, I get the man deed right back up to Pullman. I was like, back up to Pullman. I think it was a laugh last time and went up and uh, I just, I don't know, it was, uh, when I was in, I didn't, the seriousness never hurt, hurt me, the seriousness of it, because uh, I was just in, I was in the under 18 hole, so by that point, all the under 18s, you could put in a separate hole. Uh, purely a lot to do, do because if you're under 18, you couldn't buy tobacco. So when they were all mixed, cunts at 20 were just buying cunts tobacco and they were uh, buying them like bars of chocolate back for it. So they was kind of cutting that out. So I went back to this hall and it was Blair House, it was called, it was fucking nuts. Got all under 18s in the jail, just all fucking daft, mad uh, hiding. Crazy, that. man. <laughs> but it was a laugh, don't give me that. <clears throat> I say it was a laugh, just being back uh, in the jail, there's no <laughs> a laugh the situation. But then, uh, as I've been in, so I ended up getting fully committed. So it was five months I done the man, I remember. And uh, my lawyer came up going, like, right, it's got to the High Court, it's a serious case. And uh, so I had to get a QC at the time, that's a Queen's Council, aye, it's a King's aye. Council now. So, what like, your yeah. lawyer has to, your basic QC represents you in a High Court. So, it was a guy called Tommy Ross, and uh, he came up to see me, and he was like, ah, like realistically, would you think you're going to get for this? And I was like, ah, two or three years or something. He's like, ah, mate, you're looking at about a six or a seven. And that's when I was kind of like, ah, right, I'm fucked, man. And Because uh, what age would you have been then? Like, 17. Say, so you would have be, you're thinking I'm going to miss like 18, 21st and all uh, that? Aye, that's when it kind of seriousness hit me and I was like, ah, fuck, and they're like, ah, right, they kind of rent, so if it's an attempt murder, because this just goes back to, I made up this elaborate fucking bullshit story. I went in with the interview with two posts and what the day is, right, so you might have a lawyer present, right, but you can waive the right to that. Uh-huh. So they get a tape in front of you, obviously record the, the, the conversation, but what the day is, they'll keep the tape off and go, listen, 
you're allowed to have a lawyer and that kind of thing but it'll take time you'll be in here for longer we just want to have a few questions that that like, you that. Right? And, and, and they talk to you and you go ah that sounds good so <laughs> when they hit record they go ah right you've asked you if you've wanted a lawyer and you said no you're still happy to proceed and you go aye so it sounds in the tape as if you said I don't want a lawyer aye. so they heavy hoodwink you aye. and uh, they always they do, do that like, man and there's a, there's a channel I watch called uh, Jim Can't Swim on YouTube and it's like it breaks down in te- like interrogations and basically the whole thing is like never don't say a hang unless you've got a lawyer there because right. like, they, they will talk you into traps uh, aye so uh, and they'll, they've obviously got my techniques of being nice and one of them's that nice top guy, what, one of them's nice and then one of them's like ah, why did you do it and all that like one fuck of, with your brain one of them goes out and gets you a big tasty and all aye. that aye. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, that me, you realise it man I was 17 I'm thinking I'm fucking I'm smart I made up this story saying that he came at me with a blade I got it half him and stuff fuck him <laughs> <laughs> accidentally you know what I mean so I was trying to tell him that and then we're doing this good cop bad cop thing so by the time I went to court they were like listen you fucking I'd been stuck in a, f- a few cunts in the house plus I'd pretty much fucking and tell them and slipped up and shit I, no but I'd, I'd pretty much tell them well, I'd been stuck in half cunts and, uh, so I was pretty much fucked so there was no way I was, but I was I was adamant I was taking it to trial with a self defence thing and uh, so the lawyer said to us he's like ah, right if we get the indictment back so you'll get your indictment back like 90 days into your fully committal and that'll tell you what you're getting charged with and what court you're at so it's like if it comes back as attempt murder which I was charged with go to trial on that because there's no really much yet there's no limit to attempt but there is I think the limit's like 10 years so he's like the, you could take it to trial and get 6 year or you could plead to it and get 9 year drop to 6 so he's like but if it's an assault to severe injury parents so are that I think that really the basis for that is like 6 to 7 years so you could get a much lower sentence so if it's an assault to severe injury plead to that but if it's attempt murder take it to trial so I got it back and it was assault to severe injury so I was like alright I'll plead to it so uh, I went to court then, uh, it was the day after I turned 18, so I turned 18 the 9th of June, I was up at the High Court in Edinburgh on the, the 10th of June, and I got six year drop to four and a half, and that's what the, the, the QC kind of prepped this for, he's like, you're looking at about four and a half, that was the kind of going rate, mm-hmm. so I got four and a half year, man, see, because I kind of braced myself for it, I remember getting back to my little cell that night, and uh, I remember sitting down and just, I took my trainers off, and I was kind of like, ah, I better get comfy. Because that was the way uh, I just felt as if because acceptance. See the man, see fight like remand. It's end. He'll tell you a remand's worse than been sentenced. So what actually is that? Like because I always just hear that. Oh, remand. Remand it's just like sure. when you're waiting to get sentenced. Uh, so see if they don't. If you think you're at risk for whatever reason to be on bail, they'll remand you until your right, trial okay, date yeah, or yeah, sentence yeah. date. And you're saying you're remand is like you're separate. You're not in the actual like remand's got its own bit in it. It, it does, but in, when I was in uh, the under 18s, we were mixed. Right, so we were okay, mixed in because okay. it was all under 18s, it was aye, too much so, task all the time. But usually you are separated. But uh, so, see, being on demand, it's it's such a fucking mood swing. Because one minute you think, I'm getting out for this, I'm getting away with it, and the next minute you're like, I'm fucked, I'm going down. And you've no idea of knowing what because it's down to the judge. It's the hope that kills you, kind of thing. Aye, so when you, you, get, you get wee snippets here and there, like, ah, fuck, well, somebody's fucked up a statement, all right, I might give it that. Or, or if they don't give me my indictment, my indictment in 90 days, oh, I, I get automatically. You're just playing the waiting game, aren't you? So it's all that, but it's with sense, like, like, I've got a sentence, I've got a lib date. Then nothing can change that. Mm-hmm. So that was the kind of it was almost like that kind of closure. I go and, and see, see, like when you so like obviously you always hear like I, I don't know what the case would have been with you, but now you hear like I go eight year, but you'll probably be in four. Was there anything with you that was like I have got four? Was it four and a half? Four and a half. Four, were you, but was there like a mad way where you were like I might go earlier or something? Or was there any so, chance of that? See, at that time uh, when you go a sentence, usually see if you get under four year, you do half of the sentence. If you get four years or over, at that time you've done two thirds of the sentence. Right, so you, you, you go over basically, didn't uh, you? So uh, I get four and a half years, so out of that I would have done three years. But I could apply for parole, uh, and if you got parole, you'd have got halfway, got out halfway through the sentence, so I'd have done like two and a half years. Mm-hmm. But uh, I had to wait until that date, so my earliest date of getting out was like two and a half, two years later, because mm-hmm. I'd already done my five months from the man, and they kind of, they basically started your sentence for the day you came in. So no the day you get sentenced, that makes sense. So I came Aye. in in January and I get sentenced in the June, so my de- my sentence started in the January. So I was already like, five months into the sentence. So I was like, I had my head like fucking right, get a parole date, get this and that, man. But it was like, it was 2010, my lived date was like 2013. And so I, it's, it, it's, it's, it's like you're, you're so detached for it, aren't you? Uh, like, it's, it's an odd thing to say. It's like no scene 2026. You can't imagine where we'll be in 2026. It's a weird mm-hmm. thing. So... I turned 18 at that point, so they were just waiting me getting sentenced and like about a week after I turned 18, like, all right, you're going up to the long term hall. So I was going up there with all the lifers and that aye, kind of shit. What man. was that like? Were you shitting yourself a bit? It was a bit of an experience. I was kind of like, all right, I need to fucking go up here at some point. And I was, but I wanted to stay in Blair House because I knew every cunt. It was, aye. the screws were all right and that kind of thing. But I was like, ah, look, because most cunts I'd met, like, 
when you get like a sentence like that, you see cunts, you're like, right, I'm going to be seeing you a lot more. You've got cunts that are doing six months, like, I'm going to see you again. But you see cunts that are maybe waiting for a murder, fucking a, a trial for murder or something, or they've got, just got nine years and like that, right, I'm going to probably be seeing you a lot. I'll probably do, do it a lot my sense you. see, especially when you were in the, 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 the younger bit, did you get people in? Obviously, you were in and you were like, ah, I've been here before, no cunts, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but did you get people that were in and they were like, what am I doing in here? Well, what? see, funny enough, but it's not, you probably do, but cunts try and hide it. Well, I know who the first cunt that came to my door the minute I get demanded for that. The guy who's Kettler chatting. Oh, no. <laughs> he was like, you dirty bastard. He was laughing, but he was, uh, he was in for a murder, know what I mean? So he was like, fucking in for the long haul. He ended up getting nine years him. That, it wasn't my original pal, but it was uh, the boy I was dubbed up with. His, that was my pal, but it was their Kettle. Uh, he, 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 he was the first at my door, and I was like, oh, fuck sake, mm-hmm. man. He just... If you ever get to the jail and then you get out and you get back in, you meet some cunt, you just left. It's kind of, you're like, fuck's sake, man. I was hoping I wouldn't see you again because you know you're back in the jail. In, the I offense, but I, in these circumstances, you would only see them in the jail. So once I went up to the over 18s so the LTP, so it was kind of, I know it was just different. It was up in what this, what's the tap landing, right? So, uh, how can I compare it? See, like you go into Grand Central Station, and when you're sitting there, it's pure big. It's got like the arts with the windies. Ah, and right. That's what the tap landing was like in there. Right. So, and it's different for the flats. are just like, usual like this. So it's only the tap one. So when it went up, there, I was like, "Fuck, it's massive up here." And it was just, it was a mad thing. Then seeing cuts pure solid out there, not ah, cuts like nineteen twenty, like pure bears full of steroids and that. And it was just, it was like a level up, man, to a degree. And uh, the cunts you're dealing with, cause you're dealing with cunts that are they're kind of mature, they're fucking, they're doing long sentences, so they can't be asked with shite in that, man. Right. So it was kind of... They're just it, wanting to, like, live a kind, no peaceful life, but, like, they try to get on with their day, they're more up for bamming and, cunts up, yeah, it's just like I'm mad. No get, bamming cunts up, but they just can't be asked with, because they're there for ages, they don't want any shite, basically. Aye, that's it, it's just it's a lot more chilled, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, <laughs> do, do you get cunts that, like, see, whenever I've I've spoke, spoke to cunts that have come out of jail, and they go, oh, I used to run that wing. To run that and that, do you actually get cunts like that? Like, oh, this is his mad fucking. You do uh, see now, in, in terms of Pullman, right? Because see, because Pullman's all young boys and that, like, most cunts that are like, established fucking gangsters, as we say, as such. Like, see, if you go into like places like Shots, there's like certain fucking gangs outside. I'll not mention them by name, obviously, but there's certain like gangs and families outside that fucking run like fucking sections because there's that many uh, and they've got that much pull, they've got money. As in, likes of Pullman, it's maybe the cunt that maybe fucking. He gets a bit of puff in, he punts, he's able to get a fucking launch in, so he punts, so a lot of cunts kind of go to him, uh, kind of yeah. thing, man. But what you'll notice is, right, see the cunts that have got the mace pull in the hall, especially the pullman, they're the cunt that sell the biscuits, the bars of chocolate, <laughs> the, the snout. See the cunt that sells the snout, he's basically the cunt that runs the hall. Because like ah, well, you go in, mate, and they've got like a bed box for like 40 packs of amber leaves, they've got biscuits, so it's like two for three back. Wear them like cheap up in jackets and that. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see, see my pal's cousin, he... he he moved up here for he's for somewhere in England. Can't remember, um, can't remember where. But he moved up here because he was fucking in and out of the jail all the time in England. He's like, ah, what a fresh start. He moved up here, and I was talking to him. We went for a scran, and he was like, ah. he said, he said, and you always hear this, but I don't know if it's true. He's like, ah, it's easier. It's ten times easier getting shit like drugs in the jail, and there's many of them in the jail than outside. Did you did you find that when you were in? See, in England, I think it's very different. In England, I think right. English jails are packing. Don't get me wrong. I think in Scottish jails. It's the same. See, when I was in Pullman, it wasn't such the case. When somebody got a bit of hash, it was like a commodity. Or he's got a bit of hash in there, or you'd bang through. I I never really used to smoke hash, but I did a first, a a couple of times. See, when I first started my sentence, I was dubbed up with a boy for Greenock, and the guy next door is he does a bit of hash in, man. But I was just starting to get into the gym because. I used to eat a lot of shit. I used to buy a hunt. I'd spend my full canteen. You get like twenty pound a week, and I'd spend it on sweeties and shit and crap. And uh, I would do that. So I ended up putting on a heavy gut. And then I was like, right, I've got an half few year in here, man. I'm going to go a fat bastard with no teeth. That's the way I seen it. And I was like, ah, fuck this. So I patched all the sweeties and that, and just started getting in the gym because the way I seen it. <clears throat> Like I've got, I'm going to have nothing to show for this time in here unless if I go to the gym I'll get out massive uh, and I've done like, something with that time uh, uh, you, you've got something to show for it so, so see even like then right like because see before that right you, it seemed like you were just like ah, fuck it fuck it what am I doing who am I bamming up but then it, see obviously when you're doing that sort of amount of time is does it get to a point when you're in there like ah I need, to, I need to do something here. That, that, something like forgetting out. I need something needs to be positive to in my life. It, I, I well, I was, I was like, I'd go doing a, the first work party I go. So you get a thing called a work party. You'd go like morning and afternoon and send you. They'd have very sheds call it. That's what they call it, a work shed. And you'd have it's like a, a vocational training plumbers. You'd have like the brickies or whatever. I get put in the plumbers. 
so you can do like modules and that kind of thing and it kind of gives you like an introduction to plumbing kind of thing so if you've got to college you're like, I've got this if you're about to go in and take plumbing uh, further so I went down there first so I ended up doing the modules and that down there and uh, I was kind of like I'll, I'll do this and that kind of thing man but uh, I've done the modules down there but then I just ended up getting fed up with the work party so I was always what I get into and just do something so I ended up going to the barbers after that and uh, I was like, I'm going to be the Nicky Clark up home. I'm, I'm so shite at cutting hair. See, the very first cunt say, I cut, I cunt called Rab Duncan for Linthouse, right? I'd first time I'd met him, I know him now, right? But at the time, right, he sat down, I had no clue. Like, the barber would be like, listen, shave up to your dear, this and that, on you go. So, <laughs> don't, don't break it, you know what I mean? That's what it was like. This cunt sat down and, uh, just, like, see when you're cutting a cunt, right? See, obviously at that point, right, I don't bother now. See if you, like, if you go today, like, somebody's here and you know I'm going to fuck this up. See when it's somebody for, like, your area or for Glasgow, that kind of thing. You're like, see if it was somebody for Falkirk or anywhere else, you wouldn't give you a fuck. You think it's funny? <laughs> see, because they're figured, but you kind of feel fuck. So if you're betraying man, you're my boy. The, the guy that shat that guy's kettle suddenly had a conscience, you know what I mean? So, because he's got a wonky face. Oh, bro. Mate, so he's like, all right, he's a zero and a one, so I'm doing it and I'm kind of. The thing it was like zigzags and he's head man, but he's talking to us and he's like, aye, aye man, but in a few months and that, he's like, I've no to visit. But uh, my mom, she's no get, she's need ID to get up to visit. My mom's no get ID, so she, she just go ID. She come up with me, bro, first time I've seen him fucking buzzing and I'm oh. butchering this cunt and I'm like, ah, oh no. So after a while, I'm like, ah, eh, mate, these two things, I went away and got that barber. I was like, mate, you need to fix this cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so he's went out and fixed it and see that way you could tell the cunt was just kind of looking. See that defeated way, man, he just knew I'd fucked it when I had to get aye. that guy out. Aye. So, I eventually got good at cutting hair because like, uh, I was like I, I'm going to be having cunts queuing up for me <laughs> I eventually did and I, it was a pain see, now see when you're doing that right now obviously like you get I, I'm going to assume no right but you know how when you're saying you get 20 quid a week for this and that do, do you like get paid for doing that aye, aye? so I think you get uh, the starting point was like 6 7 quid a week right okay aye, so, you aye, get, so it's like a, pow, a, like a pound a day or something pretty like. much so you would get 20 pound for your PPC it was called that's your personal fucking account or whatever the fuck they call it so basically if people honed in money for you that was honed in your commissary or something aye, so, but got? somebody outside would need to hone that in for you so your ma your dad or somebody right. so that's your own money you would get 20 pound for that and uh, you would get your wages, which were six or seven quid. But some cunts would be living after wages because they didn't have any cunt outside. So in the barbers, you don't get tips, right? You don't, didn't get tips. <laughs> so I was basically doing a barber's job, but no, just getting the same six, seven quid a week. So imagine what barbers do, right? I was doing that for fucking six quid a week, right? Then I get tips and that. And I remember one day, right? So I ended up parlaying with these two boys up in the hall, right? So I ended up finding my workout partners. We go and do a workout and that, man. And uh, one day this boy came in. And he'd sat down and I ended up cutting his hair and I'm like, ah, what are you in for that? He's like, ah, fucking done a cunt with a golf club, this and that. And he said where he was for, he was for Hamilton or something. And I was like, ah, do you know so-and-so if I fucking do that, man? He's like, ah, oh, fucking. And these were the two boys I worked out with. And he's like, ah, ah, f- ah mate. He's like, I don't think he really likes me. And I was like, I don't know. He's like, ah, I fucking done his fucking uh, nephew with a golf club. And I was kind of like, ah, really? And I remember this boy saying something about it, like saying it was a cunt, but I, was, I just tippled as soon as he said that. And, and I like, just cut. Ah, so I was cutting his hair and I was kind of starting to get my head and I was like, ah, I'm, I'm going to cut this cunt's hair. I can't give back up and say to this cunt, I just give that guy a haircut. So it's gone about my head and I was like, I need to do something about this. So I'm like, ah, right, I'm going to punch him. But I was like, ah, did I punch him in the And I was like, I didn't know what to do. So I'm like, ah, this is got because I was being pure sound with the guy. So it was like, ah, this is, so I was, so I was trying to, I was doing heavy problem solving, right? I'm going to do this. So as I'm cutting his hair, I've started kind of starting to get a wee bit get wee digs in him I was starting to prepare him for it because see when they first start doing in the chair right I'd give him so what I would do with a haircut if it was a zero I would do the zero up right round then I would go and like, trim it down Aye. so when I first done the zero up to the sides and back I was like two seconds mate I'm just going to go and get like the clippers and uh, see the wee uh, the guards and then when I came back he's like ah, mate, uh, mate any chance you can blend that in a wee bit and we all started laughing like I obviously thought that was his haircut so I kind of broke that back up my like, would you have done if I left you my haircut like that <laughs> I was I was fucking like that, and so I've started progressively trying to get wide with this cunt, but I don't think a cunt's tip, I think he just thought I was fucking just the way it was. I've cut his hair, right? It was a fucking belt of a haircut on her, and then fucking I was like that. so they had the sinks where you'd go and wash your hair, and there was the toilets at the back, mate, and it was like wee cubicles, mate. It was fucking you, you only had enough to like fit yourself in for a piss and back. It was like a cupboard. 
And I've walked in, I was like, ah, mate, here, I'll give you some banging shampoo. And he's like, ah, see, obviously, bus, you get a good haircut, been in a jail, I think he's got to get I'll get some of that red links ah, there, bro. Mate, <laughs> 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 mate, try some of this shampoo. So I've walked into the toilet, and he's walked in, and I've just turned around and went bang, <laughs> cracked him, man. And, mate, I've never seen any cunt look more confused in my life. Oh, my God, that must have been crazy. <laughs> he he, he kind of went like that, and kind of, mm. so I've never seen any cunt look more shocked in my life. The cunt was like, ah, pure stunned, and every cunt that was like cutting, like, cunt's cutting hair, bro. <laughs> Like, ah, can I look? What the fuck just happened there? And, Did he uh, say something to you? No, no he was he just, he like, ah, and then the cunt kind of started walking, but his hair was soaking, so he's kind of walked to the, towards the door where there was two screws talking. And I've walked back to the chair and just pulled grilled him. I see that way he swaggered back, and then I was kind of like, ah, in my head, what the fuck am I doing? And then he's kind of he's trying to run out the, the, the doors, though. he's trying to run out the hairdressers. The cunt's like, ah, what's going on? Bro? What's <laughs> that must have been me. One confused, it's a pure sinful <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, cunt. <laughs> the thing I can say in your favour is. At least you tried to warm him up for it a bit. Aye, <laughs> you were hiding. We were just like, we were like, just like, we were 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 just like, we at providing the meals it's in the bloody name isn't it guys mm-hmm. look troops if you've been listening for a while you know the script with Molly Molly provides only the finest meals, Jamie. Quality ass meals. What are, what are some of your favourites that have been there oh. so far? Just over the months, Jamie, because she does change it every single month. Well, mate, I do love the Nando's chicken with the uh, the halloumi. Oh, and that the halloumi. the peas and the Nando's sauce. Absolutely oh. beautiful. But the best one, I think we've always said, is the chicken jambalaya. Oh. S- simply exquisite, bro. Aye, it's exotic. What, have, the- they, what have we got coming up this month for Mo- oh. Molly Mila? I'm glad you asked, Jamie. So, this month, Molly's changing it up. And she's bringing back some classics. So this month for the standard meal, she's got roast chicken with garlic potatoes, veg and gravy, smoked sausage, creamy tomato pen pasta. Oh my goodness, we've not had that yet. No, the, the nation's favourite, the Chinese style chicken curry with rice is oh. making a comeback. Uh, as you can see, Jamie is rubbing his nipples at the sheer thought of sticking that in the microwave. Uh, sticky barbecue chicken thighs with sweet potato mash, tender stem broccoli, sweet chilli prawns with garlic potatoes, creamy tomato pen, which is a uh, vegetarian and veg Chinese style curry. That sounds unbelievable, mate. And, you know, with Riley's gaff, if you do want to order uh, Molly's meals to keep you nice and fit, she is going to do a wee offer where if you order five meals, which is the minimum order, if you order them, she's going to throw in two free breakfast meals. And what kind of things can you get for a breakfast meal, mate? If you mention Riley's gaff, by the way. Um, so... For the breakfast meal, she's got the healthy fry-up, oh. the Biscoff overnight oats, which are unbelievable, the Nutella overnight oats, which I've not tried, Molly, sort me out. Sort me out. Um, she's also got high-protein meals as well, which are a bit more expensive, because uh, there's more of it. Uh, that's just how the economy works, people. Um, so, I to order, get in touch with Molly at Molly's Meal Preps on Instagram, and all you need to do is DM her and say, look... I want to order. I seen you on Riley's gaff, and you don't need to say, "Am I gonna get the? Am I gonna get the offer, oh, please, Molly?" You don't need to say that. She just knows. She knows the script. She's by now. a businesswoman, all right. You can get them delivered, or you can pick them up at the Milton Muscle House, baby. You sure can. Is it? What's the real name? Uh, Performance Twenty Two, the best gym in town. The best gym. Recently voted one of the top five hundred gyms in Milton. So get ordering trips and keep that belly looking trim. In a party, I just want to roll. Big boots and what's the top. Troops, look, the lighter mornings are coming in now, baby. And you know what that means? More people can see your bushy pubes. So we need to get that shit sorted, don't we? And there's only one company to visit. Manscaped, baby. Manscaped.com for all your below-the-belt grooming needs. Um, God knows I've had a few of those needs in my time. I've... <sighs> I've left it for months at times. Months just to see what happened. And it's no pretty. Now I'm on the lawnmower 4.0 weekly. <laughs> I've not seen a pube in about six months. I haven't seen one. It's bald and I just shave it anyway, baby. Just to keep it keep it fresh. And we're going to get your money off, Manscaped. We're going to get you 20% off anything you order. But what I would advise you do order, because this is what we get sent in... Once you order this, there's no need to explore further. You've got it. You've got the total ball package. 
So the perfect package 4.0 kit. Now listen to this, baby. The lawnmower 4.0, all new skin safe electric trimmer. So they've developed it in a way that you know those nuts are very fragile, and we know that if you've ever tried to. I mean, I remember being a wee guy and trying to cut my pubes with own my boss with scissors. Disaster waiting to happen. So it's really in it. So get the lawnmower 4.0, and that's designed to not nick. And also the Crop Preserver Anti Chafing Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner. And what's class as well, they give you um, these mats that look like newspapers, right? So when you're shaving, all that hair just falls there, and then all you do is wrap that bitch up and throw it in the bin. And they're going to throw in a travel bag that's worth £30. Now, this travel bag has served me good, to be honest. Something I didn't really have, and now I've got it. And the Manscaped boxers. You're getting boxers as well. So all you do is go on to manscaped.com, pick your boxer size, pick how many you want. You might want to order five, which would be fantastic for us if you want five. Um, But if you're only ordering one, it's fine. So you pick your boxer size, add to basket, and then what you're going to do is you're going to use the code Riley's Gaff at checkout. So you're going to get free worldwide shipping and twenty percent off when you use the code Riley's Gaff. So you know the lighter mornings are coming in. The sun has got his hat on. Let's make sure those pubes are shaved, baby. Cheers. Speaking of like try to run out when you're fucking soaking wet, tell us about the the showers only turning on for a bit. I heard you oh, talk about that one. I saw when I was in Blair House, right? So. Is this the same, sorry, is this the same four and a half year? Aye. This story, right? Aye, so, so when I was in Blair House, right, so Blair House was a really new hall, and seeing all the new jails, one of the new halls, they build them, and they've got built-in showers in the cell. So you think, bro, you get a shower in your cell, man. So in Blair House, in Pullman, that's the only hall that's got that. Or like, you're, like, there's Iona and Monroe, there are two other halls. They're older, so they've got the showers in the hall. Mm-hmm. So uh, you had your shower in your cell, like, ah, pfft, got a shower in my cell. But see, the thing is, we like the cell water system, so it'd be like a, a wee panel on the wall with two buttons. So see if you've got to use your, your sink, it's got like two buttons, one hot, one cold. And it would have a timer on it. So see, you'd press it once, it'd be like 30 seconds, so you're washing your dishes and that. But like, I think you get like three presses out of it, and then it would cut off for like half an hour, just in case you're trying to flood your cell. So the thing is, Every cell was different, so maybe you get ones like you press it, it'd be on for a minute, and some you press it, but like 15 seconds, so it was just your luck. So the showers were like that, I know. So I ended up getting put in a cell, right? The first time I get put in it, like, the very first cell, right? The shower lasted ages. I get free presses, but it lasted enough to get washed and all that. It was sound, you can enjoy yourself. But something happened in that cell, I think the screws had to move me into a cell across the landing because they had to do some work in it or some shit like that. And I get put in this cell. And the shower, the fucking thing lasted like 30 seconds a piece. So I'm used to, I enjoy my shower, not, I mean, it's a bit of an experience, it's a moment we are saying, right? I like bro. a shower, mate. Ah, I mean, you get you just one You just think about shit, bro. Exactly, exactly. Mate, exactly. So I'm like, ah, right, get in for a shower. It was like a pure ritual going in, fucking, I think it was after the gym, I know, see that like, nice relaxing aye. shower after the gym. And I went in, obviously washed myself doing that kind of thing, and, uh, I've went and fucking washed, put my face scrub on, see that, hey, looking in the eyes and that, like, you're fucking, you can't see, and I'm like, ah, right, one last press, and I pressed it, and the thing was fucking half. It was turned half, man, I was like, ah, you're kidding me. And see, this, like, the shower was in where the toilet was, so it was like basically a wee, so imagine the corner, there's a toilet, and then there's just like this shower hanging, like a drain, but there's like a kind of water in it. But not side of that was the sink, so I've had to kind of fucking walk out into my cell in the buff, looking about, try to find the sink, walk round and go to the sink, only wash my face in the scud, man. I was like, ah, if a fucking one of the bird screws walks in, mate, I'm getting pushed to tension, man. <laughs> ah, it was dodgy, man, it's fucking... Mate, it's... that was, i seen you talk about that, and I always, I thought it was pure fascinating, just because, like, I don't I don't know, I think that, like, Aye. just having a certain amount of time, and then that's, like, you, know what I mean? I thought that was mate, mad. See, see, like... You're, now I said like when I first seen you it was like you like talking about being in the jail and all that with the tag still and all that do you know right I always had in my head right we we'll, like I'll have him on this podcast one day and I I purposely have never I've watched podcasts that you've done and I've never listened to one of them because I was like I want to hear them for the first time in person uh, you know what I mean uh, so I hear a mad natural reaction <laughs> to see obviously. You, you, you did that four and a half year was there, <laughs> a, was there anybody else in there you're like ah this cunt's fucking mental or a, any tales for that that's that time of being in there I, there's a couple of mad oh there was fucking 
There was a lot of mad cunts. Like, cunts would just do mad dash shit as well. Like, I remember there was this guy two cells down from me. This shit would go and like this this wee guy. He had a fucking his bird coming up, man. But the wee guy was a wee fucking weirdo, man. He was just so strange, and. Uh, he used to talk about his bird. His bird was this big fucking fat thing. Had forties on the gaff and all that. And this, his, his co-pilot was a guy for five, right? This, this will make sense later in the story. But the fucking the co-pilot end up. I think the wee guys been at a visit or something. And the co-pilot end up going through his mail one day and getting his bird's address and wrote his bird a letter. But then the worst thing is the bird wrote back to him, <laughs> sending saying like she went like a mad slush. He was passing the letters about, so we all knew about it. Not that man. Fuck's sake. Aye, man. Then fucking and then they fun out and it's been pure one of the ones. Like, I mean, it was a shame the wee guy was he looked oh. like about twelve or something, man. But he ended up getting out an appeal. And I remember fucking one time this guy came in. His name is Craig Roy, boy from School Bridge. Ever heard of him? <laughs> Don't know. Nah. So basically, the guy is he's not that rat. It's not that. No, I'm thinking. Uh, there's, there's a mad rapper called something Roy, isn't there? Yeah, uh, McCroy, McCroy. Aye, there's aye. no him, there's it? No, no, totally, right, totally <laughs> different guy. So this boy's homosexual, right? So he had a boyfriend, and uh, he was an East School Bride, and basically, I think the boyfriend, he was going, we'd been cheating on him or something like that, so he's telling him, like, come meet me, I have a chat to you that, and he's met him in this woods, and the weekend, he's pulled a fucking kitchen knife and stabbed fucking him, murdered him. What? Get 19 I'm years, sick, right? Bro. So this guy's came in, a right? gay stabbing, bro. A gay stabbing. Wild, so this cunt's got life with 19 years, and it was all the papers, and obviously we were in the LTP hall, so the screws like that, Mate. fucking... He done it for love, but I mean, <laughs> it's, like, it's like you going, I'll get out, I'm going on holiday, man. He's like, ah, no, but what you don't understand is, like, I'd get cheated on. It was love. <laughs> ah, no, <laughs> mate. Can't you put the order the next day? Get off scot free. So he's coming up, and obviously he's just like he's getting dubbed up. He's getting done all that pattern. Ah, yeah. So he's came up, but he get put next door to me, right? So he's came up, and it's one of ones. He was very, very feminine, ah, and it was so different. Like having somebody like that, what about hall? Because you, you're in a hall with fucking mad, like, scheme cunts. And, and, and the thing is, like, if you're ruined, like, obviously you're in there and it's a mad environment, like, every yeah. day wants to be a daft and everybody nobody wants to, to be a mad victim and that, so everybody's pure alpha and up, you're your fault. Like, uh-huh. every, so then you throw him into the mix and it's a pure curveball Mate, for everybody. How, how did he get treated? How are well, victims? that's the thing, so they didn't put him in with a co pilot, purely in case I've got to shag them or something like that, you know what I mean? It's like his. Cunts are choking in there, right to the point they'll no care. There's cunts doing long sentences, so he get put next door to me. But it was one of ones. He actually get treated all right. I've been because I think there becomes a level where there's a, a heavy liberty if you're treating anybody. If you're trying to do something like that, like you that. won't get respected for bullying. Aye, I'm aye, so it's like bullying cunts. Well, cunts hate bullies in there. But uh, when I left the hall, they actually I don't know how it happened. There was two boys that fucking. They ended up, so there's a job called The Pass, The Pass Man, and basically you're opened up, there's like four E's in each hall and you get opened up, you serve the dinner, you clean the hall, so you're opened up all day, whereas everybody else is locked up, and two boys end up getting sacked off The Pass and investigated by security because they, they'd got him in uh, their rooms and go to suck, suck them off. Fucking hell, Suck man. them off, man, aye. I, I'm not going to name the cunts because they're, I don't want to name them. <laughs> one was for five, one was for Glasgow, so it was dodgy, mate, man. Aye, but it's dodgy. I, but is that just, do you think that's just what happens in there? Like, cunts are just so fucking, I need something. No, aye. really, because every cunt was like, what the fuck? Because we were in Pullman, because <laughs> the knowledge you've been in Pullman is 20, 21, so you're that young where you're like, stated at a cunt. It's the talk of the jail. Aye. But uh, near the end of my sentence, man, I fucking... I started getting out in an outside placement and that kind of thing and uh, I, I was working at like, this place called the Falkirk Stadium and uh, when I got out there, man, I fucking... I was getting up to no good. Let's just say I started acquiring certain things Aye. and basically I got my horn in steroids, man, and fucking... I was, it was D-balls it was, so they're like 10 milligram tablets. So I'm a mad fucking over addict, so I was gubbing like 15 a day and all that shit. And <laughs> back. That's when I was right in the gym. But I would gubble at 15, then go for a shite and blast, shut them out, and gub another 15. Fuck so me. I, I end up developing this mad cough. It was like, I'd go, <gasps> I'd be like, I see coughing. I'd be like, like, cough, like, like they So in between, like, when this was happening, it was in a time when, uh, you ever remember the whooping cough? Aye. Aye, aye. It was all early papers. I went back to the jail, right, and they fucking, and I was coughing like this, and then I was in the showers, and I remember a nurse coming out, like, ah, what the fuck? And like, <laughs> you've got that whooping cough. I'm like, ah, I was, I was going to my nut, obviously, Roy's aye. fucking, people like, I'm fucking, you just don't get a fuck of it ending, and I'm talking to <laughs> I keep in. So they kept me in. I ended up going to the doctors and that, and then it was brand new. The country just went like, nah, you've not got nothing. And I was like, ah, fucking para, man. By but- any chance, have you been gubbing 30? <laughs> 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 aye, and that's it, fucking, but. I was up to no good there, man. I remember fucking, let's just say I was sorting cunts out. Aye, aye. And I remember, obviously, fucking my arsehole was involved quite a lot, you know what I aye. mean? So I remember at one point I fucking, 
I was very over ambitious, and I remember at one point I stopped four and a half ounces of hash up my ass. Oh, mate, I was walking like a cowboy. Man. I had to take oh. an ounce back. Out. I just peeled mate. ten stuff there, man. Mate, how? I don't, I, don't I, want, I don't even know if I want to know, but how? What's the like the mechanics of that? Practically, what do you do with that? Well, do you put it, a, do you put it in a Johnny or something? Uh, I wrapped it in cling film and, wrapped, and covered it in Vaseline. <laughs> uh, so, but see, the thing is, man, I was. Did you shape it? it? Aye, I saw it was like a fucking dildo. Was, but see the thing is, cause hash, so you, see if you didn't overwrap it, the, the wee pointy bits of the hash would stick out. Oh. So basically, see your ass is like, so when you're sticking something up your ass, right? So imagine that, that's your asshole, right? right? So when I'm sticking something up your asshole, almost to incorporate it, but your asshole's gripped around it, and then, see it'll go like that, and then it'll go like close again. So, is it, is the, rim of your ass, the rim of your ass is around the circumference of whatever object is. So see if it's a jaggy object, you're, it's tight on that so mate, I don't where, know how cunts can take it up the ass. mate where did you pull that remote for it was just oh, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was did you bring it away it was up the ass. I already, and, and I already prepped them for the, I, the asshole story <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just what it fucking looked like that was for the whole house so and I remember I was consuming a lot of protein at the time so my shites aye, were sticking yeah, with the stuff major. of legend aye. people used to talk about them all the time so when I was bringing like, back Valium Roids and that for cunts cunts were gubbing them and it was tasting a shite <laughs> so mate cunts mate cunts oh. were coming up to me like mate what the fuck man cunt you want to see he's that? got history of that <laughs> <laughs> mate cunts were like having to like fling like a steer step like fill up a fucking protein shake I thought I'll fling a roid in it and fucking wire oh my god oh, no. oh, mate, oh. it was oh. mate cunts were waiting that's that. right. a kettle or something <laughs> <laughs> mate see obviously you're saying that was at the end so like see when you're getting out and that what, are you, what is your mindset like are you like I'm no fucking going back in there or are you still like fuck it I will at that point I was sitting like, what I'm, age are you uh, when you got out 20 right. so I was 20 so I'd been in for I was 17 so it was strange I remember seeing near the end of my sentence like, in the last few months I remember that like, it kind of dawned me I'd been in a wee bit of a stretch because I was like, thinking of things see when you get a wee memory it pops in the head oh, I remember yeah. that but it was shit the hand at the start of my sentence and I was like oh, that feels like fucking ages ago I'm still in for then and it was just it was kind of dawned on me but so, I'd been out of this work placement for about five weeks, and uh, the screws came down one day like, listen, you're off the work part, we've got intelligence, see you're fucking bringing shit into the jail. And I'm like, who, me? You're what with John Wayne, mate. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd ballooned up and all, I'm like, you're full of juice, we're talking about getting steroid tests and all that, and I was like, I was pure arguing with the cunt, obviously, nastily. And, uh, <laughs> but, I, so, when I was just at the Falkirk Stadium, I'd end up, there was a, I well, said, what, behind the bar up there, and I'd end up battering into her. So I'd end up fucking getting in about this lasses. So I'm sitting obviously pure felt head there, heels well, not I mean, but in a jail for her just there two and a half years. So I was like that pure in love with her. And uh, she'd give me her number. So when I get taken off a placement, I was like, ah, fuck, I'm off that placement. And the next thought was, I'm not gonna see that bird again. Aye. So I end up phoning her for the jail and talking to her and that kind of thing. And I think she maybe thought it was a wee laugh at first, but obviously I was pure fucking obsessed with her. And uh, no, at the point I was weird, just that way, like, ah, this mad guy. Aye. So uh, I'm obviously phoning her, right? And uh, I'm phoning her and she's doing shit to herself on the phone and all that, but the phones are all like, they're monitored they tell you to start the phone call Aye. and obviously I've just been taking that first placement for intel so well, a, a logical brain would think they're going to be listening <laughs> to what I'm saying so I remember saying to her she was small she was like five foot something and I remember saying something like that to her like along the lines ah you're, you're tiny you wouldn't be able to reach my stash or something like that <laughs> that was me flirting <laughs> <laughs> so I remember like the next day two days later screws came back in like that with this bag that was mine and uh, a lot of that was like, and, well, I, I, we listened to your phone call last night, and uh, we went down, uh, went into the changing rooms and found this in the ceiling, and uh, and like the guy was pulling it out, and he was like, he pulled out the cling film and the Vaseline. You might have just seen the disgust in his face because obviously aye, he, knows no, he, knows, he knows my ass had been in contact with it, or he thinks my ass had been in contact with it. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> but uh, then they just went like, I, I and fucking uh, police have been involved and all that. And then when I phoned her one day, she was like, listen, the fucking see idea, just away from my door. Uh, asking about you and I was like ah, fuck so that was like six months to the end of my sentence so at that point I was like ah, right I'm gonna get like, a gate arrest so a gate arrest basically see when you go to release you the post turn up and charge you with something and take you to the cells oh, and you fuck. don't get it so I was kind of worrying like ah, am I gonna get it so in my last six months I wasn't able to like, kind of get excited about getting out because I had that in the back of my head just worried I nah, so I remember the day I was getting out and I was like ah, right nothing's been said doing shaking everybody's horns see you later all that shit and I was going down in that way my heart was in my chest I'm like am I fucking getting out because I'd been in three it was three or two months by this point because I ended up getting an extra sentence for something that happened fucking previously I stole a screwdriver at a motor <laughs> so I, I, that old fucking <laughs> that's shit. usually how people like, get into them <laughs> <laughs> oh, this will do well for I 
Robin Motors. I was in it mad with it. Like, fuck, I'm not even into on you. That was a souvenir, bro. I know, I done it. I was mad with it and walked by. I know I keep, I'm backtracking here, but uh, this, this adds to how shit a criminal I was. I was walking by it with my pal. We were looking for a house party just after a party, and I was like, uh, trying motors, man open, uh, uh, jump in. Uh, reading about fun, nothing fun, a screwdriver. Picked up, I'm, I'm taking this, put it in my pocket, and go, walk around the corner. Police pull up Gildas. Turns out they drove by me whilst I was in the motor and I didn't notice. They came oh back and Gildas. So I oh, so bro. I get free I get when I get four and a half years, two weeks later I got a hundred days consect for that. So that was a hundred days I did on my sentence. I was mere gutted about that and I was a four and a half year. I was like, uh, what? <laughs> Can I killed it not? But uh, they kept they kept the sentence, so I ended up doing three year, two month Aye. come the end up. So when I was walking down the reception, I was like, ah fuck man. I was like, I ah, fucking hope I don't get pulled in for this. So they call it the dug box he's in the reception so it's basically the waiting area you just get put in like this big fucking box like a room like this and they'll lock the door and you'll stay in there like the other prisoners so I was in there waiting to go out and the door's open it's been two screws like that can move a word with you and I was like ah, fuck man this is me getting a gate arrest they've took us into a room and all like that I was like right, what's this about like cut to the chase and like that no we're just because you've been in the jail we just want to ask you questions about the prison that kind of thing it's it's mandatory we date with everybody and that right and they're just like how was your sentence uh, how was the facilities and that and then the, it was a woman I knew she was actually having a sound with she was asking questions she was like right put the pad in she's like who's bringing the steroids in and I was like, as soon as she said that, my heart just sank. Uh, and I just went, that's me fucked. And I just went, fuck knows, man. She was like, listen, I went on holiday for two weeks, came back, and you'd fucking doubled in size. <laughs> and I was like, I'm fucking throaty now. One of the ones. And I was just sitting there. I was that way I'd get resigned to my fate. And I was like, nah, fuck knows. And she was like, right, okay. On you go. And then she went and put us back in the room. And I was like, right, can I, is that it? Uh, and then the cunt came back with the screw. Like, right, yeah, she used it good to go. And then uh, what they do is they walk you through the reception to where the gate is. I don't know if you've seen like, the front of the jail's got the big gate. Aye. And uh, they've walked us to that and what you'll do is you'll wait there then that gate will open and you'll walk. And uh, I remember the fucking, the gate opening and I just looked at him and I was like, ah, is that me? Can I go? And he's like, aye, on you go. And then I just walked out and I remember just the, the air hitting me, man. I was like, ah, fuck, man. Was, it, was that heavy? Like, was that pure emotional? That, mate, that? see the thing is, any kind will tell you, mate, see for that full three or two months, Every single day, I thought about getting it. You would have dreams. You were out. That was the worst. And then wake up. Oh, oh, man, jail, that's fucking torture, major, mate, bro. Murders. Every kind of every day. You always think about your life is geared towards the day you go out. What I'm going to do the day I go out because you're not thinking about. Oh, I can't wait the next month that I'm in the jail. It's you know, <laughs> nuts. It's like your life. It's like your life's on standby. Aye, but, aye. Uh, the, the three one year. Thing, purgatory. Uh, it's almost. Uh, it's almost like imagine like the world's in a race, but you stop dead and you just watch every cunt race by you, and you're watching cunts fucking. He's overtaking aye. me, but I'm stuck. That's what it feels like. Oh, so it's like been trapped in limbo. So once you go in, it's like just it feels just I don't know it was is just, it overwhelming a bit because you're like what did I do like where, where am I going now because you've had all this time to think about that day well see the very first day I'd always planned this in my head it was quite simple at this point like my sister came picked us up and I planned it I used to walk from my, uh, where I stayed in the Moss Heights down to Penalty it was like a fucking 15 20 minute walk and I'd thought about that walk every day man I was like I just imagine it and see that way when you imagine something, then when you see it, it just seems smaller mm-hmm. or like less grandiose. It was just weird. I felt like I was in a dream. Aye. I just thought, ah, the were, you, were you ever thinking, I'm going to wake up in a minute and I'm no... So you know, I was pinching myself. Aye, aye, fuck, something, man. Aye, I get like that all the time, man. I'm like, is this real, man? And it's like... Do you ever get like that now? No? Aye, with certain things, aye. Aye, aye. fuck, aye. that's mad, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, when I go... The last time I got like that, a small story, so I ordered... Fucking! I basically get funding right to buy equipment for the podcast, so I got enough money that I was like, right, I'll be able to buy two cameras with this. But I needed a new laptop. My laptop was fucked, and I was like, if I'd have got me on money, I bought a new MacBook. Uh, Mac- MacBook. It was a MacBook fucking Air I was looking at, and I was looking at right, can I get financing this? And I was going to ask my mom because my credit shit. Like if I go to her name finance, I'll pay her every month. And I was like, what if I lose my job, man? I, I can't do that. And I was like, right, I can save it. All these ways and means, right? So I've ordered these two cameras, right? And uh, I'm waiting on it, and fucking like they've sent it out as two separate orders. So I've got one camera one day. I was like, ah, right, just went to another one. And the next day, posty came, and, like, and the guys like fucking signed for this. Hey, it's fucking about heavy by the way. And I'm like looking at it, a big square box. I was like, ah, the fuck, a fucking camera? How is it this heavy? Opened it. It was a MacBook Air. It was a MacBook Air. They t- addressed for some cunt in Devon. They t- sent me the ranking. Bro, that's fuck. Fate, bro. But see, at the time, I was like, oh, fucking idiots, I didn't order this. <laughs> I, was, I was putting it up and uh, I put, I, put it, I tagged him and uh, Insta and it was Ravey popped up like, mate, sell it and double your money. And I was like, because oh, the, the camera was worth like 300 odd quid and this was worth like a grand. So I took it down and I tried to go and sell it. And then I remember sitting later on that night, I was like, oh, you know what? 
they, if they've sent me that, they've obviously sent the camera to whoever they met to send the MacBook to. So if I play daft, they'll know if I've got this. So uh, I went, I emailed the cunts, and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll have opened this empty box. I thought the empty box that they flat out. I've just got this empty box. Where the fuck's my camera? And the next day, my door went fucking posted with my camera. I going to say the polis. I was like, oh, 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 so, so too close to polis. I was like, in the post. Posted turned up giving me a camera. I was oh, like, bro, that's, and that's had, a good lord, bro. But I was like, ah, fuck, I've stuck myself in because they're going to know I've received something. Right. Then they emailed me back, like, listen, uh, Bible Records, it's in, we, we can see that you received a delivery today. So if that's your camera, don't reply to this email and consider the matter closed. I was like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So at that moment, I was pinching myself. Is like, this real? See, even like, so obviously you're like, I start that. What, what made you about to start your podcast? Was Just to be in the jail? Or? Uh, well, so it was me and two of my pals. My pals died. He just died. And uh, it was one of the ones we, we went, like, we're going to go and get a few pints. Uh, no, it was like he died like a week before. It was just in that period of mourning. It was a Friday night. We went to the village hotel and see that's got like a wee bar bit. And we were just sitting there having a few pints. You know what it's like fucking solving the world's issues, one of the ones are fucking, it's just like pure wisdom coming through angles. And it was a Friday night, but there was a Rangers game on. Well, it's just strange. I can't remember who they were playing. And uh, we seen, I think one of the Rangers players came in and then we seen the guy from Rangers TV, he came in and he was in the next booth for us. I had his laptop set up and he had just the two mics and he was doing an interview and we were like, ah, look how fucking easy that is. Aye. Like, we could do that. We could do a podcast and we are like, ah, let's do a podcast. So this was right before like, lockdown COVID was a thing, so it was directly before it, so that ended up coming into effect and it kind of got put in the back burner. But at that point, I started posting videos online. Pardon me. Just, I ended up posting like, a wee video of me doing like, a Jerry Cinnamon parody and uh, <clears> then... <throat> It done quite well for me. It done really good. For, it didn't go pure viral, but uh, for it, I'd ever posted. Aye. And uh, obviously, it was lockdown. Because I remember seeing a quote saying, "This can either be the making of you or the breaking of you. Mm-hmm. It's up to you to pick what one." So I was like, ah, "Right, I fucking." I was. I'd stopped playing the guitar for ages, so I seen my guitar lying there, and I was like, ah, "I was followed." I was like, oh, "Fuck, I'll play the guitar again," and end up posting that. It done all right, and then I, I get a wee buzz off it as you do, aye. and then like, I end up fucking. I was singing that Coldplay tune, Yellow. Like, and I was just singing, he was falling like yellow, and I was like, <laughs> I, I could do a parody that. And then I was remember thinking, like, am I going to do this again? And I was like, no, what, fuck it. And I done it, and I posted it, and cuts, and I done it as well, but it's still done all right. And I was like, you know what, that's what I'm going to do. Just post a fucking aye. parody. Every do you week. know, Hank? Do you know, Hank? Like, see that first video you post that goes big. It's like a drug in it. It's like you're aye. like, I want that feeling again. Addictive, mate. Aye, it's addictive. addictive. It's addictive. It's good. It's a, it can be a good addictive. See that way. If you, it's, it's like gambling. Mm. It's almost like gambling. See that way you're chasing the big numbers, you're aye. chasing the big hit, aye, yep. and it's but it's you need to be willing to take the the whole ones because it's, it's like sometimes it just fluctuates. Not I mean you always see, and it's not. An, it, you realise like the more you make them, I'm sure you've realised this now. Like you can put. There'll be a video you make and you put hundreds of thought in it. You're like, I'm going to do this. Then I'll come in with this one and it'll be different cunts. And then he'll say this and then Aye. you post it and it does shit. And, and then you day one that you just thought five minutes ago and it'll blow up. Bro, like, there's no kind of way to gauge it. No way to judge it at all, man. That's so true, mate. Like, I always say, I send ones to everyone all the time and I'm like, is this good and that? And I'm like, oh, I'll change this and all that. And they ask for ages and I put it on TikTok and it gets like 5k views. And then I posted one the other day. I didn't even want to post and it was just me copy and like uh, it was like mad hard to say Scottish places and I was doing them and doing them all rang and I get 500k bro or like 480 <laughs> yes. or something mate and it was heavy and I'm just like what, what do you follow that up mate, ah, I mean, like, mate. Just, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing as well because you're like ah, right because that's what I've realised in all because times before I bought that shit I'm not posting that so you know if I think something shite I'm like I'm posting that <laughs> <laughs> that's going to blow up and it does shite I'm like fuck that's really shite <laughs> it'll be one it's heavy, a heavy humbling man Aye. but uh, it's, it's, it's just this one of the ones he it's good getting the views, but see, the best thing is just to go see if it doesn't do well. Ah, fuck it. Uh, That's yeah. you, need to, you need to, like, I think you need to. S- I think you start because you get addicted to that look at the views and like you're refreshing it and it's just light like, like and you're like fuck me man fuck I, I'm, I'm good at this and, uh, and then but you reach a point where you get so many that you you're like ah that's good and it does not and it brings you back down and then you start learning like oh I need to just post what I think's good and then mm-hmm. if it does well it does well and if it does not it does not uh, but yeah. see you just going on to that you obviously seen them doing an interview and that so see just starting your podcast know how like you were like that look how fucking easy that is See when you started it and that, 
Did you were you like, oh, this is a bit harder than I thought? <laughs> you know, oh, mate. It, it really looks like the easiest thing in the world. Oh, didn't it? mate, it's, mate, it's the hardest thing getting cunts in a room together. Uh, See the men, obviously, you're like, there's two years, you'd probably find that difficult as well. We were doing it with fourth cunts, mm-hmm, so we started hard, it. Mate. But see, by this point, the reason why I started talking about the videos, so see, by the point we actually were like, it was like maybe getting into the August of lockdown, I'd kind of built up a wee bit of a following. So when we're getting into this podcast, all right, well, we've got an audience, to aye, aye, aye. so we're getting into that. So we've done the first one, we had a GoPro, this wee GoPro, my pal had fuck this GoPro fuck you man <laughs> fucking GoPro the cunt defends it like it's his fucking disobedient dog honestly <laughs> don't give me that I've done the job at first but we set it up and it was one of the ones we were just sitting with a few beers and Pirate Studios it was we took away a couch just chatting shit and shite or shouting at each other like ah, <laughs> you man, you man, you're mad what you getting mad uh, I think mean, we fucking took a microdose and all fucking mushrooms and all that <laughs> man, so we're like off that was good it flew back then uh, mate, no, do, you know, do you know Hink sorry mate to interrupt you do you know Hink when like, so we'll do some, right? Like, we'll, we'll do probably 75% of our podcast, we are baked in them, right? Uh, and see the mere bait show, you're like, mate, that was, f- you'll come out and be like, that was fucking Joe amazing, mate. Laughing, mate. Right? Like, we'll phone each other, driving home, pure, mate, how good was that? Oh, mate, I can't wait to see it. And then you see it back, and you're like, oh, that was good because I was baked in it, uh, rather than, like, uh, the yeah. actual, so you learn, like, at the time, it feels amazing, but then that doesn't necessarily mean when you watch it back, it's going to be unless, as good. unless everybody's on the same fucking. Aye, unless aye. everybody's just smoked a fucking joint. Aye, aye. Aye. So, mate, see, like when you first started it in that, because obviously I seen it. The first kind of ones I seen were you sitting, like just talking about being in the jail and that. So I think, what, see, when, see when you were doing it and that, like when when was the first sort of times? Because obviously you started it with the GoPro and all that, and you're like, oh, it's a fucking riot and all this shit, but. Obviously, now it's got like a good following, mate. Like, and what I always and I've said this to Jamie and that, like, what I love about yours is, mate, you have like, see us, right? Obviously, like, people, people like what we do and whatever we've got a following, but we're in a fucking. I've just been gifted this studio, basically. Like, we've got this set up. We've got Jamie editing it, mate. You've actually done it all. It's all you. It's in your gaff. It's like you built that up for absolutely fuck all, and I, I, I love that, mate. And Aye, the, the fact cheers, that you, the, that. the fact that you've got that audience. Just off that is fucking, it's unbelievable, mate. So, but, but when do you think you started getting into a mad rhythm lately? Like, I know what I'm doing here now, and I kind of am getting a, a grip of this, and... <laughs> Still no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, you see, to be honest, it's like, no, I recognise, because you know yourself, consistency is what breathes the results. We knew that for the start, like, we need to be consistent. But at the start, I had a... Uh, so there was four years, and when it came to, to light for it coming out, two pulled out, like, ah, I don't want to be on camera, the shit they're talking about, fair enough. So we end up with two years, my pal Matt's like, ah, it was his GoPro, he's like, ah, listen, I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> I'm taking my GoPro, I'm going to take my GoPro and hitting the road. But he's like, ah, listen, I don't want to be on camera, so I'll be behind the camera. So at that point, that's where... I was like, right, this is on me. And seeing all my life, I'd always started shit and never finished it. And that's and it made me feel like a pure failure. And I done, I just felt as if I had nothing gone for me. Not, I couldn't have done nothing right. And I was like, ah, this, I'm no fucking getting up in this. So it was at that point, the focus was on me to kind of make it. Because I was the guy in camera. So I basically, all the results you kind of see, no, I mean, outside of the production, because you see the production, but it's like on the cameras, you're kind of like the guy talking the conversation. That's really what it makes up. Obviously, production is a massive important part of that. If it wasn't for the people doing the production, it'd be fuck all podcasts. But for the viewer looking at it, unless they're fair production background, they're looking at like a the content. Talking. Exactly. Aye. So if you're no fucking up to mark with that, man, no, I mean, people are going to switch off. So before, as I said, it was four people. So if I was able to sit back and no get a fuck or some kind of else would do that. So I was like, ah, right, it needs to be on me. And uh, at that point, it was it was fun, man. It was fun. And I realised the first time I'd done it, I, had, I don't even think I had any questions. Melrose was the first kind I had. And just because I was talking to him, I was like, mate, do you want to come on a podcast? And he came on and I don't even think I had any questions for him. I yeah. just thought I was just going to talk to a freestyle a fucking podcast. <laughs> and then it was like a half hour thing. It was a few random thing. And I was like, ah, right, I'm going to do this like Joe Rogan. See that way? It's just, I'm not going to ask questions. I'm just going to have a conversation. Uh, <laughs> see if I had any caught pre the date part of the been called kitchen chat that's what I was going uh, for we were thinking about something mate, we, like were, that, we were going to talk about that because we've always same. said like um, it's, this is just meant to be like you're in a kitchen at like 4 o'clock in the morning that's and exactly like, what I was mate, even and, and do you know Hank like and you'll know this now but you just like once you start that and you see how natural like Joe Rogan is at it and you're like that look because he makes it look so easy just going Aye. Aye, so what have you been doing he, he almost like it doesn't feel like he's asking questions uh-huh. you're like he's not like, see if you watch like Joe Rogan you're like ah, he didn't even really ask it in there but he does he just does it in a way that 
is so relaxed and caught. it's Aye. no like so when you done this you started it. it's no Aye. so then you grow respect for cunts that can do that but then you realise like, as you say you're like I'm going to go and wing it man just vibe, vibe it out man and then you realise like oh shit I can't I, I don't know really how to do that properly Aye, yet ah yeah because then you realise because I've done that for a while so I just want to make it seem like the, the audience are flying the wall and all that Aye. kind of shit and I realise that people are tuning in a lot of the time they're about, you're about to extract something for the podcast and I've realised that it's trying to get a message I watched uh, let's see Diary of a CEO and that kind of gave me the like the realisation uh, like certain guests are what do you want what message are you trying to send for this podcast Aye. whether you want to inspire people or depending on the guest kind of thing so that's so recently I've taken a lot more seriously I'm trying to expand my questions I'm trying to ask questions like ask would you want your legacy to reflect I'm asking like recurring questions like, and I'll try and ask a question that people will remember Aye. or something like that it's like oh that's a good question that kind of thing which Aye. is forcing me to be a bit more on the ball week because I'm guilty of times of no writing questions till the day of Aye. putting it in the back burner then just copy and pasting questions for the last guest and you're not and it's just see as you say you know yourselves you put in half arse attempt you're going to get a half arse result there, there's reasons why like see like that hot ones and that he's known as like, a mad amazing interviewer because like every single or like Nardwa it's like where, where's this cunt getting these questions for me and I think there's a mad talent in aye. coming up with questions bro because since it, we've it, been doing this aye. like I can't sometimes I'll be thinking and I'll be like I know what kind of vibe I'm trying to get off some cunt but it's hard, it's hard to and actual it, put it into aye. a podcast and, and like you watch podcasts and you'll be like fuck that was a good question and you're like I would have never thought of that question mm, do you know yeah. what I mean you're like how did he cause like if you get a fucking you get a fucking comedian on you're like ah, so when you start there stand up uh, where we uh, always uh, funny it's <laughs> like you know what the questions are gonna be but then really good interviews are like they'll, they'll ask ones that cunts will sit back and go fuck I haven't even thought of that do you know what uh, I mean so uh, there is an art to it but see just on that obviously it's been a success some of them have done crazy views on that man um, you do. You absolutely do not need to say us, right? I'm just wondering who's some of your favourite ones that you've came out and done. Fuck, I, 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 I love that. I would definitely say you're one, no, because I'm sitting in front of you, you know what I mean? But the usual were definitely one of them, mm-hmm. because just purely, I love it seeing when people come on, like, as I've said before, you'll get some people on, man, that's kind of trying to like, get blood out of stone. And, and I suppose that's on you. You need to, That's you to fucking grow as a podcast and an interview where you need to get gain something for the conversation if it's no forthcoming. Whereas with some people, it just comes organic. Like, you can go off, like, go off fucking the tangent. Tangents, talk yeah. shit, talk about going to Vietnam, aye, fucking aye. how races are Vietnam. Just mad stories aye, you wouldn't have got. you want. Get a laugh. And see, sometimes I find that, I don't know if it's the same use, because there's two of you. See, because it's me, myself. See, if it's one-to-one, the conversation came a bit more quick question answer a bit more serious when it's three cunts you end up because there's three opinions rather than two aye, 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 just it, man. like see yourselves uh, Bridgie that was a great one it was uh, he was uh, some people you just meet you, you should jail when just see click with him immediately aye. and do you know Hank like 10 minutes into it you're like yes like aye. even in this one like 10 minutes into it I was like yes like, relax, you just know, you? Aye, you know. Relax. there was a point in this one where we done and we're like uh, we had to stop for like two settings and then see when we went back in it you just done and it was like you had the exact same face as when it stopped you're like aye. Aye, so anyway, what I was saying, I was like, this cunt knows what he's doing. Aye, he's on it, he's on it, mate. Know the first time somebody's went for a fish. Aye, but they, no, they ones are class, so like Ridgey and that, but mate, one you done, and then obviously you end up making a documentary, was about the, the Luke Mitchell Aye. case, and what, what, you know, you had that guy on, and obviously that's, that's fucking, it's interesting. Is that, is that guy a lot? Lo- is he a lawyer? He's a lawyer, right. right. He, so, sorry. see, just, see, what, what? so obviously you had him on what intrigued you so much to be like I want to make a fucking actual documentary about this it was his idea oh was it right ah, okay so be, uh, somebody put me on to him because uh, a, a guy Bonnie Prince Bob shout out Bob he messaged me because I was looking for people to get on the podcast and I messaged him he's fair and he's quite an interesting cunt he fucking loves ranting on Twitter about the SNP but, yeah. <laughs> but he's a sound cunt know what I mean but uh, he said to us I messaged him just like ah, do you know when I can't get on the podcast kind of thing and uh He's like, uh, I'll get back to you. Then I, I was in through Edinburgh one day and he came up to us. He's like, uh, I don't know if uh, you're interested if you're like to go down the James English route, but there's a guy who wrote a book about the, uh, the Luke Mitchell, Jodie Jones murder. Uh, if you're interested in that, I was like, I put me on to him then. So he set up a WhatsApp chat between us and I was like, uh, well, if you want to send your book, mate, I can read it, then we can go through there. So he's wrote this book called A Long Walk to Justice, available on Amazon if you want to get it. And I read it and I was like, ah, fucking hell, man, this guy knows his shit. Really interesting. So I messaged him. I was like, ah, right, let's do a, let's do a podcast. Let's, let's get it done so he stayed in Edinburgh and usually I'd have people come through to mine for it and he was like ah, so you want to do air zoom I was like alright I don't usually do air zoom but I remember doing it and uh, 
I'll be honest, I was actually fucking stoned at the time, right? <laughs> and I never did podcast stone because my brain just doesn't. I'm one of the people I kind of talk on it. Aye. And uh, I was, but I was fucking obviously an addict, so I was like, it's usually I try and put it off, but I was like, fucking end up smoking for it. And then I was just doing a podcast with him, and that way I just I felt myself that way. I just see because it was Zoom and it was buffering and all that shit. Then it would come up the timer, like your uh, session's going to end, and he's halfway into this detailed story, and I end up. Right, to me, I'm gonna just patch this and I, I, this room isn't working. Can I just come through to you and do it? And he's like, I, I just come through to my house in. So I've ended up filling up a gym bag with all my podcast shit, fucking the laptop, the mics, mic stands, cameras, everything. And I've got a bus to Edinburgh, I go to Edinburgh and jumped off. And I had to go to Wester Hills, which is like, so basically the bus takes you there and Wester Hills is here. So I had to bounce out and cross like mad motorway lanes and all that shit <laughs> to get to this bus stop at this shopping centre, go right away up, his bit pissing her in that. And uh, I've went and met him and this bit, he's came and got us, then we've ended up in his house and fucking set it all up in that kind of thing, man. And I we've, we just went through it and Scott fucking knows his shit, as you see, for that. It, it made it very easy for me and that was the very first time I really made it question and answer to the point. Because before I'm like, I'll ask something, but I'll, I'll leave Tangent. home with this. You're kind of trying to gain something where you're trying to portray information that he's got. So it's mere centered around this case. And he said that he's like, I don't want to make this podcast about me. It's still about the case. It's so, the facts. Uh, uh, so I've centered all the questions around it. So that's why in that one you'll see a more question and answer. But a lot of people can connect with me. A lot of people love my interview style on that as well. Like, I loved it, the, how, the way you were just so shrewd with your answers and that kind of thing. And I, Scott, he took it away, man. He made it so easy for me. I just had to kind of basically like Broad the start them. to the fucking petrol. You know what I mean? He just uh, took it away, man. And I it blew up the true crime stuff, man. And uh, Scott's like, we should do a documentary. And I was like, I am, I'll do a documentary with you. And uh, my initial idea was hire some cunt, uh, get a cameraman, I'll just basically ask him the questions and he'll talk away. They'll film it, edit it, and we'll put it out. So I was looking for somebody to film and edit it and I couldn't find it. I had people saying aye, but they weren't maybe, they didn't have enough experience or the, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the maybe it was money problems and all that sort of stuff kind of thing. And I was like, ah, right, we got one guy. And I thought this guy was going to film and edit it. And like the week off, he's like, oh, mate, I thought you were just wanting me to film it. He's like, I can't edit it, uh, I'm too busy now. He's like, I want a kindy, but he's like, I'll film it. I'll film it for you and uh, you can edit it yourself. And I've all edited the podcast and that, and I was like, I know what, I'll have a stab at editing it. So we went out. I had like an hour's sleep, man. I think I'd fucking, I'd, my, I was just half a night shift, man. So I was like, I hadn't ate. And we were stopping about fucking this place, man. It was fucking, it was one of the ones had boots and all on. It was <laughs> muddy and jumping about this bit. And uh, I'd structured it in a way. Because I was planning just going out blind with the camera. Then Bonnie Prince Bob shout out again. He's phoned us. He's like, ah, mate, uh, are you planning doing this like a fucking basic an expedition? I was like, ah, he's like, I had a feeling that was the way you were going to do it. He's like, ah, trust me. Because he's done documents before. He's like, ah, script it write a script aye. write an outline of how aye. like a mad in, like a mad starting statement so, about the case and then aye, aye. what you're going to show that. storyboard exactly and, and I went and done that and she he's like ah, listen it'll make your life so much easier and it did it was fucking invaluable de- uh, advice you know what I mean when I done it because it just it, I was able to envision right how am I want this to look and that's at that point I was able right I'm to, like, Scott's getting on information but I'm creating the story here so I'd scripted it all when I was going to talk and that kind of thing and we went out, so when we went, we did go out, we were able to go, right, we'll go here, we'll go there, we'll go there, and that, and thanks to Scott, he was able to give me all the information, when he made it so easy for me to write, I wasn't having to go and find this information out for myself, mm. and I needed to know I just messed him. So we went out, filmed it, and that kind of thing, and uh, go there, obviously some bits kind of changed for the script and that kind of thing, because Scott, once he's, he's on a roll, he's on a roll, he'll tell you the full case in t- fucking 10 minutes, which is great, because it gave me more to edit. So I got that, and then... Uh, we done it for the day and I was like, ah, right, let's get to it, man. So when I went to go and edit it, man, I, so I worked in a student accommodation, I worked night shift. So I worked four on four half, but it's 12 hour shifts. But I'm just like a concierge, fucking cunt at the desk, aka fucking counsellor, depending if this, the students are in. <laughs> but I'll spend a lot of time sitting doing nothing. So I take my laptop and edit my podcast, edit whatever. So I was like, ah, right, I'll use this time to edit this. And don't get me wrong, see, when I started it, I was kind of like, ah, I've had a bit of more than I can chew here. There was a few times I was ready for throwing up there, because that's when I had that piece of shit laptop. Aye, the aye. thing that fucking, I've still got is a piece of shit. And uh, I was doing it, and I was editing and that kind of thing, man. It was slow, and see, because it was so long, I was piecing bits together, and like, there would be bits that I would need to, like Scott would mumble, I'd need to try and, like, see, just try and fucking make it more clear. There's some bits that's not as clear as it should be, but... Trust me, I've made it a lot more understandable. It be, yeah. see, see as well what you're saying, like, it reached that point, you're like, fuck this, I'm mad, why? There's a, I've been, like, r- pure obsessed recently by, like, mad ancient 
ancient, let's say, like Roman emperors and that, like uh, the mad philosophy for that time and that. And there was a there's a guy who studies it called Ryan Holiday, and he wrote a book, and it's all the book's called The Obstacle Is the Way. So like, it's like whenever you feel that feeling, that's the way to go. Going. Like you uh, need to go through that. Uh, that's the whole point. And like life, like once you reach that feeling, like you're doing something you are today, and it gets to that point, you're like, this is getting too much. That's how you know you're going the right way. Mm, I totally agree because I've realised that. I've not realised that in the theoretical time I'm reading about it, but I've realised that. For, see, every time I felt like getting up, and then I've just pushed through. I'm like, I, I was. That's when it's I never I, know I, worth it. No, I, I feel like that's you, you're, like the universe testing you. I believe and you, and you do that. Like uh, that happens in everyday life. Like, think about every time. I mean, you go to the gym, all sorts, right? I mean, I, I bet there's. Well, hundreds of times that you be, you maybe when you're gone you're like ah, fucking can't be arsed today but there's never a time that that happens and then you go and go fucking wish I'd never done that uh, never, every never. time you're like I'm fucking glad I just didn't listen to be, my, uh, my brain there being comfortable pure kills your progression uh, uh, yeah. if, you're, if you're like just staying a bit that you're like sound way like, uh, like the gym if you just keep lifting the same weights all the time you're never going uh, to comfort's a dream killer as they say uh, and that's what I find as well it's because see, when, once you recognise that and you realise, wait a minute, there is a fucking, there's a connection with us. There's a, uh, you realise, once you get the feelings, it's kind of an indication of where to go, aye, as you say. So aye. the mere I feel, I don't want to do something, or no, I should I do that? And you've got all the doubt, the resistance, aye. all like that. I, as you say, that's the way to go. Aye, so aye. I've kind of learned to identify that. So that helped me get that documented finished because I was spending like 10 hours the full night editing this thing and... But it was fun at the same time because as I was bit the day in it, it's different for a podcast. Podcasts are just switching cameras, really editing the odd bit out, putting the intro, the outro, all that. With this, I was able to fucking take cunts on a fucking journey, like put in the music, fucking, and then match the, the video, the music. So you see a lot of dramatic music and that kind of thing. I was having pure fun with that because I was like, ah, ah, this is pure creating something, man. Ah, I'm something in a journey. And know you what can I mean? make you can make a scene feel different because it's got a certain lighting or, or uh, Sh- like music behind aye. it. Aye. Just in, or even just see, just piecing together the wee scenes, maybe us two walking that, but adding music and then I was watching. <laughs> oh, I'm fuck, this is creating just it was fun. It was just it was so good, man. And. Uh, See, Dana, oh, and as I say, I fucking put my doors, I think, about 50 odd doors, maybe longer into that. It was in the run up to Christmas, so I was about to get that done for Christmas so I could kick back. And then I got it done, and it was just, see, when I finished it, I was like, ah, oh, thank fuck, man. See, that way. And that is, it's like, it's delayed gratification. Like, like, when you're putting all the doors into something, you finally do it. And see, for that as well, it was, it opened up a new door in my mind, because I'm always, I love documentaries, and I realised, wait a minute, I can fucking do this, I can film this myself, I don't need to rely on somebody else to do it for me, I'm getting better at the editing, where I can actually put that together, that was my first out, and I think I've done pretty well for the yeah, first I, time. Well, mate, I mean, you, you said, like, uh, like, you felt like you never go through it in your life, so see, seeing that thing that you've created, that must have been a mad overwhelming accomplishment. Uh, you know, and mate? then, mate, how many views has it got? It's got fucking all sorts of views. I think it's 94, 95 views. That's mate, insane, that's insane, mate. Right, me, it's done better, and I feel as if there's a lot to I know like, I could have maybe done better or edited, let's see, in terms of the sound and that. But it's, it's all a learning curve. Next time, that's how you learn exactly. Mm-hmm. Next time, aye, and mate, see as well, just own the actual case, right? Obviously, you've learned about that fucking through that guy and all this. Like, you, you've heard all the information time and time again. What do you think he was innocent? Aye, totally. Aye, totally, mate. It's like, see, when you find out, we were up there, mate, and there was people walking their dogs like that, and it was a last thing that recognised Scott, and she's like, you're looking at Mitchell's lawyer, and he's like, ah, well, I know he's lawyer as such, but I didn't try to get him out, and she's like, ah, he'd never done that. He's like, is it a mad kind of known hang up there? Like, kind of... There is a bit of a divide, mate, so... This was you find see with a lot of the older people. So this was last time I've been in her thirties, and she was like, she's like, he was in my year at school. I thought he was a fucking weirdo, but she's like, he does. I mean, it was even you look at him, you're like, ah, he done it. Ah, you know yeah, I mean? that's the but thing, and it's like with all the papers and that. You, look, you need to look yeah. into the actual facts. Not right. Right. I'm just gonna find this guy, mate. I'm gonna make a decision off his face. All oh, right, have you not seen him? <laughs> no. Oh, mate, see, when I see, see, cause I remember it so well. It's everywhere. Plus, as well, see, when I was in Pullman, cunts were shouting him at the windies because when the first time I went to Pullman, I was like, right. It was almost like a kind of right. I'm in Paul, but that means I can slaughter Luke Mitchell at the Wendy's because Luke Mitchell, like you're dubbed up with Luke Mitchell, or not? Aye. Oh, he done it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he done it, bro. Aye, this guy is fucking oh, James, brother. Nah, yeah. no, but that's mate. Is that something you about to do, Mary? Like, ah, I definitely. Aye. Maybe a lot of people love need a few murder. more murders to happen, bro. Ah, <laughs> me, get my fucking kitchen. Pen, 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 <laughs> pen, pen, <laughs> go back look for that blade. Book a holiday and get a blade. That's my next plan. But no, definitely, man. I want to do because. Uh, I might have done one about spice in the jail. See, spice, when I was in there, I witnessed it first hand how fucking bad it is. And cunts are fucked. Cunts are in the section that for it. Fucking that boy I was talking about for Canvas Lang, he's meant to be fucked with it. Really? Aye. 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 Is I, I, that I, a pure like, epidemic? Aye, aye, oh, aye. bad, mate. Cunts are, I, I'll tell you a quick story, right? 
So I was going to this thing called the Recovery Cafe, and basically it was a thing for like addicts and that. It's basically almost like a meet AA meeting, but in the jail, so it's a, a slightly condensed version. And they were taught about, they were working with a guy, it was a con, and he was bad with that spice, smoking it, and he started to feel like numbness in his face, like just feeling it, and it progressed worse, and he, he went to the doctors and they done tests. And so you get your neurons in your brain when you take a drug that activates like certain neurons to certain that it makes you feel Aye, it makes you feel who you are. So basically they'd done tests and the results came back, he'd fucking melted the receptors in his brain to smoke bro. spice, mate. That's Aye, fucking, so insane, fucking cunts up, mate. Mate, that would be heavy interesting. You should do that. If you, if you need people to reenact <laughs> you need a spice. <laughs> if you need a couple of spice heads for them, mate, just see. Even just listening to your whole journey, and that's been it's been amazing, mate. And we'll need to, we'll need to wrap it up now. And we'll do it again, hundred percent. Definitely. But I'm just interested, like, because meeting you now, you, you seem very. You still seem like you've got that mad overactive brain. Blah, 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 you might do, but it seems like channeled in a good way now. Aye. What do you think? What, what what happened that was the turning point? Was it just growing up? You think, or was there a time that you were like, no, what? That this is a mad awakening. I need to fucking. Do something with my life here or something? Yeah, bro, mate. I've always had a... Uh, see, if I was young, mate, I always felt I was capable of greatness. Mm-hmm. I thought I was... And I'm not saying what I'm doing is greatness or no, but I always felt that capability. I always felt I believed in myself. Not that I believed in myself, that I felt, no, I can fucking do something great. Aye. I always felt... I don't know if, it, like, if it's a common thing people feel, or if it, you, everybody feels and it gets knocked out of them, but I always felt that. And it was always underlying, even when I didn't think I was capable of it. And there was always some part of me that always seen, nah, mate, you've got a fucking future. And, eh... Uh, as I say, like when I, I picked up the guitar, like, I got in. I would always get into something. So see, I got into boxing. And, like, I've got to be a boxer. I see myself fucking champion the world and that. And then I'd gear up and that. I'd get filled with a doubt patch it. And I'd always do that thing. So I got into the guitar, making music, and uh, that was my thing. I was gonna be a big fucking singer songwriter and that. And I fell away for that. Then I was gonna do comedy and I was gonna be a big comedian. But I fell away for that. So once I get back into the guitar, and then as things have. But I've started expanding, getting a bit bigger. People have been uh, paying interest in things I'm doing. The more and more things I'm doing that have given me interest, I'm noticing that, wait a minute, I'm fucking obviously doing something right. There right. must be something in this. And right. it's, I'm kind of refueling that belief. And obviously, I'm getting into these inspirational videos. See, we're talking about that obstacle Aye. thing. I'm realising there's a connection here. And what, all the, you know what it's like? If Once you make a decision or something, uh, I'm actually making a decision to change your life, the universal conspire to make it happen. Aye. And one of the kind of mad fucking quotes. Mm. So I felt that. It's such, so that's been my main driver. But I remember that last sentence I'd done usually when I'm waiting to go to the jail I was literally waiting to get libbed and uh, usually I'm like buzzing to go out can I wait to go out I remember sitting and I couldn't get buzzing I was like I was trying to force myself and I was like ah, mate you're literally you're nearly 30 year old and the only thing you've do- go gone for yourself is that you're getting libbed for a jail on a tag and I was just thinking about it was weird mate yeah, it was just like, a mad I, realisation and I, was, I, just... I was like that's all you've got and then that's when I was kind of like nah fuck this man so and plus everything I'm doing the new man I couldn't get back to doing nothing no. see people hit top again right. up that's no I'm invested this is a part of me in this life I'm sure you just feel the same it's yeah. like, team, for like even times I've took a break for a week or two man it's like, it feels unnatural Aye, and yeah, I don't like feeling unnatural it's always just going to be a break mate it's just constant Aye, it's that's a break it'll be it'll never be a fucking full complete Stop, no, I mean, I'm running yeah. too fast for that shit. <laughs> what, is, what is the thing that... Uh, obviously, you do music, you do TikTok, you do uh, the podcast. What what do you see in the future being the sort of thing you do? Is Are it you just... Are you constantly just going to be doing a bit of everything or is there one you see sort of... I want... That's where I see it sort of all ending up. Where I see it ending up and where I want it to end up probably differs. I think the podcast is the thing that will probably do the best i am maybe do the best first, but the music is the one I want to succeed doing the most. That's the thing that's the closest to my So that's heart. your that's your real love. And it, see the uh, thing is, mate, see and my music does does the worst, I'd say. It doesn't do the best. See if I was doing music to get famous or whatever, I'd have geed up in it. I just date for the love of it and the feeling it gives me. And the fact that it's right now when it's people on the take to that kind of thing, that gives me the buzz. Because see when I look at cunts, you know, all these big famous cunts, they always say at the start, the majority of them like no cunt was taking an interest at aye. first. And I especially guess, especially because you're you're doing See, if you were just coming on and, like, rapping on a beat that kind of everybody else is doing, it would be so much easier to get accepted quickly. Uh, but because you're, like, trying to push a mad different genre out there, sort of a bit different, everybody's always going to be like, what the fuck's this, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. And know what I noticed on, on with your music, right? If you post music on TikTok, you go in the comments, there'll be good comments, but there'll be bad comments. Aye. But see if you put, see on when you post something on YouTube, it's all good. I uh, know. See, like, your freestyles and that, it's all like, this guy's different, I love this flow, who is this guy and that? It's, and I think, that's the thing with TikTok, man, it's like, the whole people commenting, TikTok comments are, it's world. It's like, 
it doesn't matter what the video is, cunts, there's going to be some cunt who's going to try and be like, I want to be the star of this whole thing. Like, I'm, I, I don't care what this video is, I'm going to comment something and it's going to get hundreds of likes and take the attention for what this video is and put it on me. It's, a, it's an insecurity so thing, I think. Was, uh, Wayne, see, if I, I was a Wayne, mate, and I was a cunt like me doing what I was, even if I thought it was dynamite, I'd slaughter him because I, you're going to get a reply back if you slaughter I, him some cunt. Exactly. You think? I'll not reply to any time. <laughs> there was too many accounts for but that. You shit. need to tell Ravy Davies, don't reply to anyone. Oh, <laughs> mate, there's no telling uh, that cunt, man. He, uh, he, lo- he loves it, but uh, he, does, he, he does laugh at you. He's got a mad fetish for it. <laughs> That's the thing, but he's no lost five accounts. I have. Uh, I've lost too many accounts for this shit. You're holding on to this one with uh, your life, bro. I'm doing all right with this one. I'm not lost, fucking losting it. Lost accounts are brutal. Five oh. That was fucking unreal, man. It's been a pleasure, mate. We loved it. Pleasure was all, we'll date we'll again. Um, where can people find all your stuff? So, uh, you find us on uh, Instagram, Hawaii underscore five oh. That's the same as Twitter. That's the same as Facebook. I don't really use Facebook as much. My uh, TikTok, my biggest TikTok is Fawaii, F A W A I I underscore. Five Hivo 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 I fucking forgot there I've actually got a link tree it's Aye. a link tree slash Hawaii underscore Fivo Aye. easiest way to find this but if you want to check out my podcast it's premeditated part on YouTube but get a subscription to Five O Music on YouTube that's where all my music goes up and support the cause man that's, uh, nice we'll, fun, link, we'll link everything in the description Troops give us a comment if you liked it if you want Five O on again I'm sure we'll do it again mate that was fucking a pleasure Troops cheers see you, see you next time like Thank subscribe you. and don't get wild that's the yeah, one baby